right now. It is 324. We do have a new severe thunderstorm warning. It remains in the same area as uh, what we were previously just talking about for Tama County. I do just want to kind of show this broad view, though, of uh, multiple warnings that have been lining up some additional thunderstorms that have been developing. You see some of the red boxes are tornado warnings. The orange boxes are severe thunderstorm warnings. And the latest one that has come in is now for Tama County here. And uh, this is for this storm that's coming in in just uh, coming on west of uh, Highway 63 and is for hail that is over quarter size and uh, that would be up to around um, we're talking half dollar perhaps uh, up to ping pong size and we've already seen actually uh, multiple of these storms produce some very large hail and the storm that is to the north here that is heading into some of our far northwestern counties have produced some large uh, large hail already. We have some video of this too from around Ames and around Centerville, which is a storm to the north, which uh, has been producing some uh, hail has been literally covering the ground. Uh, this is from Rod Donovan, who actually works at the National Weather Service in Des Moines, and it looks like it's snowing. That is hail. And uh, this is from Centerville, Iowa, where they were seeing baseball size hail, and that storm is drawing closer to Keokuk County as well. So uh, very large hail associated with these thunderstorms so far. And uh, I will go back to radar and show that storm, which is uh, moving out of the Centerville area towards Ottumwa. It does also have a tornado warning on it. It would head towards toward Sigourney, and uh, if it continues on its path, we'd be talking about arriving uh, in the Sigourney area close to 3.45 to 4 p.m., and uh, we could be experiencing some large hail with that storm if it persists and watching the tornado threat with it as well. We don't have any tornado warnings currently. We do have the watch. Uh, this storm, though, that is moving toward Tama County and right uh, west of Iowa County is where we also find meteorologist Nick Stewart, who is in the road warrior and uh, Nick right now uh, you have been just watching these storms draw closer. What is it looking like out there and um, what can we expect as the storm moves closer? Yeah, actually, that new severe thunderstorm warning that does include Tama County, we are right in the path of the storm right now. It is slowly coming in from the southwest. We have warm temperatures. we got high dew points and a strong southeasterly wind. That southeast wind important because it provides more spin to the low levels of the atmosphere. We'll send you outside. Here's a live view of that storm. We're near the Malcolm area. Looking off to the southwest, just south of I-80, uh, right near that would be Highway 63, and this is what the storm looks like right now. You can kind of see these clouds that are wrapping in just above the wind turbines. That is a sign of some strengthening low-level flow. Notice those clouds going in from the left to the right. That is flowing into that storm, a sign that the storm is still intensifying, and we can't see it quite yet, but just beyond the, that house there on the horizon, that would be the base of the storm. And that would be the air of interest if the storm continues to intensify. Remember, we are under that PDS watch, that particularly dangerous situation tornado watch. So any of these storms have the potential of producing tornadoes. Right now, we're looking very closely on the radar view, and it does appear that the storm is spinning just a little bit anyway. Uh, just taking a look at the current conditions here uh, where we are in Malcolm. Let me try that again. There we go. Current temperature is 66 degrees, dew point at 54, and that southeast wind again, that is the problem. That's what drives in the lower level wind shear. That's why we're watching this very closely. We'll keep an eye on the storm as it moves closer to closer to eastern Iowa, and we have our options open to keep jumping on more storms as they continue to fire in southern Iowa. Rebecca? Yeah, and uh, as Nick was mentioning, there is some rotation with the storm. So uh, there's Tama here. Nick is around uh, the Brooklyn area, I believe, uh, just went west of there. And uh, you can definitely see some of these brighter reds here with the uh, storm, indicating some strong winds. And then if you look further down to the south of Sully and kind of near the Pella area, then you can see there's some of that spin where the green and red is meeting up. And so when we start to see those areas there where we have the bright red and the bright greens that's usually indicating some sort of rotation that's ongoing. Now that could mean that there's hail being produced or it could also mean that there is the possibility of a tornado, uh, especially as that rotation is getting closer to the surface. And there have been already reports of tornadoes and there have actually unfortunately been some violent tornadoes today. One in Little Rock, Arkansas, and there has been a lot of destruction there as a tornado came on through. They're also under this high risk for today. So just telling of the parameters 
that are in place that leads the potential for these strong storms and the possibility of strong tornadoes as well. So this currently does not have a tornado warning on it, but there's certainly some areas of rotation and some strong winds that could lead to the potential uh, that it could produce a tornado could potentially see a tornado warning uh, get issued. But Miral's next to it right on that storm right now, and he's going to continue to track it. Uh, this severe thunderstorm warning case, if we can go back to the reflectivity uh, is out until 4 p.m. And uh, if we can show a portion of Tama County as well and just zoom out a little bit more. There we go. Um, this would be heading toward the Tama area and uh, then into portions of northwest Iowa County and then eventually toward Benton County as well. As it, if it as it continues. So um, yeah, we'll put a fan on that. You can see it as it goes out to the south as to the north and east. So Tama close to about 340 uh, Dysert close to 425 Bell Plain uh, Brandon between 430 and 520 there. And so uh, the area of concern would kind of be down here to the south. You can almost see this little notch too on the reflectivity where we're also seeing that uh, rotation showing up. So that would indicate there's some wind flowing in to the storm and then we could see that rotation occur and that's where the possibility would be if a tornado were to form. So something certainly to keep an eye on and if it happens, meteorologist Nick Stewart's right there to bring it to you live and show you the situation. And unfortunately, with the parameters that we do have in place, it's uh, concerning the, for that threat of tornadoes. A particularly dangerous situation watch has been issued, which is typically done for a rare situation in which the environment is set up to allow for violent and long lived tornadoes. So you can see Nick walking by there, keeping an eye on this storm and uh, hard to see a lot of structure to it at the moment. It's still a little bit far, further away, but he when he was zooming in, you could certainly see some of the in flow into the storm and uh, we'll certainly be keeping an eye on that as it does draw closer. So you can see him on the map just uh, away from uh, the thunderstorm there uh, on I-80 and as soon as anything happens, he'll be letting us know. Let's go to a broader look of uh, all of the warnings that are in uh, the area right now. We have this one that goes out until 4 p.m. And then there was one that was earlier for Grundy County. That storm kind of tracked a little bit further to the north, but producing a lot of hail around Ames. And then we also have these thunderstorms that are going to start to move in near and just south of I-80. So Sigourney uh, and Iowa and uh, Keokuk counties here could be up next with those. But we're going to be watching for Tama and uh, portions of Benton, Iowa counties for these next thunderstorms to move in. Currently, no tornado warnings, but a tornado watch a particularly dangerous situation. PDS watch is out until 8 p.m. So as we continue to watch these parameters and continue to watch these thunderstorms, unfortunately, we could be dealing with a tornado situation as well. These storms are also moving very fast today around 50 miles per hour. So once a warning is issued, you could quickly see a situation where they're, they're, they're moving in to your town. So you want to make sure that you're taking shelter immediately as those warnings come in. They may be a bit broader like this one is where uh, we have a lot of area in between before the storm arrives. That's because the weather service is trying to give us some lead time. Uh, Kaysen and Garrett are in the weather center here. Do we have any reports of any new additional um, reports that have come in with these storms? Not that I'm seeing initially. I've been kind of popping back and forth a little bit. Uh, have we seen something at all, Casey? Uh, they were just continuing to see some rotation there on that. So the uh, weather service is monitoring that potential. Yeah, that just down to our south there. Yeah, and, and the one that they're looking at primarily is that one over by the Atumwa, Atumwa. area that has so shown some signs of rotation recently. Um, the hard part about this little particular cell is especially if you pull that back a little bit, something that's been really, really difficult with this thing, um, at least to kind of point out what we are trying to find is this little spike there you're seeing there that's an indication of a large amount of hail that's in there it's known as a hail reflectivity spike as the beam kind of bounces all over the place because of the uh, lofted hail in the in the area but what kind of draws a little bit of uh, uncertainty with that is is where that rotation has been constantly showing up is right along that hail spike over the past couple of uh can scans are there so you can see that little spike pop up pointing towards drakesville a little bit there but that's again part of the hail spike Still showing some signs of rotation, hence the tornado warning, but for the most part, 
it at least has started to lose its hail na nature, I guess, a little bit, if that's the word we're going to use for this. Uh, but yeah. it does look a little more promising. And, and this as one was, was producing some, those baseballs, mm -hmm. the baseball size hail. So um, this would be coming into Keokuk County if it holds together. So you're certainly seeing these bright greens and, and bright reds here. And that is where, where they meet. We're talking about that's where rotation would lie. This uh, is going to be certainly an area of concern. Did they say anything there? Um, storm near Tomah there. shows good structure and rotation. Storm approaching southwest Powhatan County. Uh, so still, still nothing new. So this would be actually, you can see the polygon is kind of funky here. This would be a new uh, area for the Weather Service. So this actually goes from uh, the National Weather Service in, the, in Des Moines to the National Weather Service in the Quad City. So the Quad City is probably analyzing this. It is possible we could see this tornado warning get issued into Keokuk County. And this would be near and just south of Sigourney and Hayesville. And so we're talking about Compentine, which is just the south of Keokuk County, uh, around uh, 349, that's okay. And then uh, Richland would be in the path of this near Hendrick, Kyoto, uh, within the next basically 30 minutes if it continues on its path here. So that would be to the southeast of Sigourney. Uh, currently, no confirmed tornado, but there is a tornado warning on this cell. And so we'll be keeping an eye on that, certainly, as there is a rotation with it. And uh, if we can go back to that, to the broad view of the storms there, and just one more time, uh, we'll show that. Uh, uh, Tama County storm as well. So that one coming into Tama County has some rotation with it. Large hail would be an issue here. And then there we go. So here we are. Uh, now we have the tornado warning that has been put out as uh, we were just speaking about. And so this includes now Sigourney, Kyoto, Richland, Hayesville, Hendrick, and portions of Washington County as well. And uh, it's the area concern right here for the rotation is just near Atumwa that's going to be moving to the north and east. And this is um, until 415. On top of that, hail size of 2.75. And so we were talking about, is that still around baseball size yes. hail? Baseball size hail still possible with this storm. Uh, currently, no confirmation of a tornado. But Garrett, do we have any uh, anything from the Weather Service? I don't know if we have any particulars. Um, on this. Can we get Garrett's mic on, please? I guess it's not up. There, there it is. Go. Yeah, for the most part, it doesn't look like they have anything indicated now that you're switching offices to DVN uh, or Quad City, sorry. Um, for the most part, yeah, they said capable of producing uh, about eight miles northeast of Atumwa, moving northeast at 65. That's about all they have, kind of just tornadic looking. How fast uh, are you saying it's moving? Northwest at 65 or northeast sorry 65 miles per hour yeah so they're they're moving <laughs> okay so let's put a fan on this so this is around a tumwa where we're watching this area of concern this warning includes sigourney the rotation is uh, likely going to stay away from sigourney as the motion of the storm is currently so that's something i want you to keep in mind uh, but we are going to see this move to the north and east east of highway 149 but could potentially cross highway 149 as it moves into keokuk county and then kind of south of highway uh, highway 92 and then we have Kyoto and richland in the path of this uh, and this could be just west of richland it's going to be highly dependent on when this comes on through and then uh, that would be close to richland area 355. this is moving incredibly fast so this was our concern with these storms the entire time of how fast they're going to be moving. So I know that it looks like it's a bit of a distance away. The radar is not completely in time. So these storms are going to be moving very fast. There's a lot of rain with them, potentially some large hail and could be producing a tornado. And it is going to be moving quickly into uh, portions of Keokuk County here. And uh, outside of where that rotation is, then we can see the, the hail with that storm too um, that is on the north side of Ottumwa right now. So um, we also do have still this severe thunderstorm warning that's up to the north and meteorologist Nick Stewart is out on I-80, has been keeping an eye on this storm and we can certainly see some inflow with that storm as well. Uh, Nick, uh, what are you seeing with this storm as it's approaching your location? Yeah, right now we are watching this severe thunderstorm that is approaching uh, Tama County. Uh, it is intensifying rapidly as well. I will tell you that visually we're seeing a lot more lightning with this storm. And also visually, here's a look at the storm right now. 
There's a lot of uh, big lowering that's starting to develop there. It's a little lost in the haze. We're losing a little bit of visibility to some, maybe some precipitation between us. But what you can tell is that there's certainly a base developing with the storm. Um, Radar view, there's a classic looking hook echo on this storm as well. So we know the storm uh, is definitely super cellular in nature. And uh, when looking at the velocity view, you know, we're watching a pretty broad air of rotation that's slowly intensifying. Uh, we're near Malcolm. It's just off to our south and west. I wouldn't be surprised if this storm starts doing kind of what that uh, other storm off to our east starts doing as well, because visually speaking, it is getting a lot more impressive here within about the last about two to three minutes. And I can tell you just the most recent radar scan as well. I'm sure you guys are looking at it in the studio. Good couplet now developing there right now, uh, right near Highway 146 near Searsboro. So uh, the environment here is certainly capable of producing multiple storms that can uh, produce tornadoes, and that's kind of what we're looking at here uh, right near the Malcolm area and Interstate 80 and U.S. 63. Yeah, Nick, uh, I'm definitely seeing that on, on radar here. So you can see that uh, where Nick is currently, uh, he's looking toward this storm here. And you can see the bright green and, and the reds. And so that is where we're seeing that, what he referred to as a couplet. So that is where we're seeing this potential spin ongoing, which is likely broad at the moment and perhaps not quite at the ground just yet. But that is where there'd be the possibility of a tornado. And Kaysen said, Kaysen, you just said the weather service is monitoring that yeah this has been one of the storms there that uh, they are continuing to monitor here and are, are just kind of continuing to track out to see if they want to kind of advance that warning but obviously just a severe thunderstorm warning for right now so this is including Tama County but if that were to be extended this would include then portions of Iowa County and uh, potentially Benton County and parts of Tama County as well. I don't want to discount the hail issue too because there has been some very large hail reported with some of these storms. And uh, the the concern though would be with this this area right here, to the southwest of Montezuma, and uh, we're going to keep an eye on that advancing to the north and east. Uh, Gary, if we can go back down to the Atumwa storm uh, down to the south, and this. Um, See if we can get a cleaner picture. On yeah, it might be just between the radars. So I still have that area of spin here that's continuing to push to the north. You can see how quickly this has been now moving to the north. Uh, and uh, Mike and the booth, you said you had some photos from around this area, so uh, around Atumwa. So we can see there looks to be some lowering of the clouds there. It's very hard to see um, uh, some of the structure with these storms, but certainly there's the potential that we've, we do have an Atumla camera too um, popped up, but it's, um, it's, it's a little hard to see the structure with that as well. There's, oh, there's some, oh yeah, let's take our sky cam. Um, so there's the Atumla camera and you can certainly see some some lowering of the clouds there. Yeah, it's quickly rotating too, a little bit. And there. it's rotating. Yep, tornado confirmed. So they, yeah, they've, um, and that's possible that we're, what we're seeing right there is that as the tornado touching down. Most likely, yes. It's, there we go. Yeah. So um, can we, can you get me on the wall here uh, with, with the camera? with our sky cam. Um, so you can really see the rotation um, on, on, the, on uh, the Atumla camera right now. So tornado confirmed, uh, which is just around um, the Atumla area, just northeast of Atumla. So uh, you can see the lowering that's happened there as well as um, the the potential for that being the tornado that's right there. So they're saying confirmed. Uh, Casey, are we getting any information from the Weather Service about yes, it? Yes, they have confirmed it as well. Uh, we'll give kind of a specific location uh, located near uh, uh, Hedrick, eight miles northeast of Atumwa, and this thing is cruising northeast at around 55 miles per hour. You can see that on your camera. There is all the proof in the world is that thing Looks like it's continuing to build and even get a little bit bigger here over the last couple of minutes. Yeah, so this is um, the sky cam that's looking at a tumble. You can see the intense rotation now going on. So we're trying to kind of catch our bearings and take a look at what this camera was doing. But you can see the rotation going in here. So confirmed tornado now near a tumble. And this is to the northeast of there heading into Keokuk County right now. If you are in southern Keokuk County near Hendrick, you need to be taking shelter right now as there is a tornado on the ground and you can see some of the intense rotations a little hard to see but if you're looking right here at these clouds you can see the rotation ongoing with this 
tornado right now near Atumwa. Um, if we can go back, Garrett, you have it up on, uh, we can go back to the radar on Max 1 here, and um, we can look at the latest scans with the uh, velocity and the track of that storm. This is tornado warning, confirmed tornado for Keokuk County. It looks like the majority of that uh, tornado warning that pushes into uh, Keokuk and a little bit in the Washington County too does include yes. the tornado confirmed tag along with that. Okay, so um, let's go to the velocities here. And so here's a Tumwa, the camera that we were looking at, looking to the northeast, just south of Hendrick, and getting close to Highway 149. And this is in between, uh, I, perhaps this is Highway 78, Richland and Hendrick is where the area of concern would be for that tornado. So this is until 4 p.m., confirmed tornado, and heading to the north and east. Uh, we are going to keep a close eye on how close it gets to Sigourney, depending on its road, uh, how, depending on its exact track here. Um, can we put a fan on that? And we'll, how fast is the yeah, storm absolutely. moving? The weather service was saying earlier on 60 miles per hour. Yeah, I think we're still at around 65 or so. Let me get the right track there for you. Sorry, I was trying to find That's the okay. sky cam to pop up along with that. Yeah, we uh, there. I know there's not a ton of the of the cameras down this way, but the rotation would be just uh, kind of coming in east of Hendrick and heading to the north and east. Uh, you can pop that up right now. We can see a photo of the tornado. Um, this is from around um, Atumwa right now. And you can see tornado on the ground there and just some dust and such probably getting kicked up. But um, there's uh, been a lot of rotation. We could even see just on our sky camera from Atumwa as well. And this is now moving into Keokuk County right now. And there's this is a look from our Atumwa camera. So it's moving a bit further away, so it's a bit harder to see. We were seeing some pretty intense rotation, though. And um, it might just be getting too far away now at this point. Yeah, but so they haven't been tracking too long. It's still yeah. big somewhere you can in see that little This bubble. is where the lowering is, and the tornado would be somewhere in here. So let's go back to the radar and time out that storm once again. But this, was, this is for Keokuk County, confirmed tornado on the ground. And if you are between Hendrick and, um, I'm losing another town right now, but uh, you want to make sure that you are in your safe place, Richland. There we go. And this, on top of that, could be producing some large hail. The storm has a history of producing baseball size hail. And they're still saying that there could be around um, penny to perhaps quarter size hail with this storm. And going to continue to move toward Highway 149 and perhaps just east of Sigourney is uh, where this would be. Let's go back to the velocity and see what the latest scans are looking like there. All right, and yeah, and you're still kind of in the in between the two radars. You can see how quickly it kind of snaps back and forth. These are still pretty uh, lofted, actually. I do believe we are still looking at the radar picture at about uh, what is that, 7,600 feet in the air. So well, because that's yeah, are you getting that from the Des Moines radar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just kind of. So this is further estimate. away. Yep. So that's kind of, that's something to be uh, at least weary of as well. But yeah, certainly a pretty significant signature from that one um, that has taken a while to at least to get itself developed enough to uh, at least have this kind of a signature for the time being. And if the tornado is still on the ground, it would be crossing into Keokuk County mm -hmm. right now. Let's see if we can switch, see a little bit of that. This would be heading toward, that's 180th Avenue, Martinsburg, Highway 149, near and east of Hendrick, Ollie, let's keep going to the north here and see if there are any little smaller towns weren't showing up before. Lancaster, Hayesville, Harper, Kyoto. It's uh, getting into uh, Washington County, right on the on the county line. So this is going to move in rather quickly. If a tornado is still on the ground, then it will be doing damage. We also have heavy rain and hail ongoing uh, with this storm here. So Lancaster around 358. That's about 10 minutes from now. So now is the time to get into your safe place and not try and see where the tornado is. Kyoto would be 409. Kinross uh, would be within the next about uh, 25 minutes. So just some reminders, of course, that uh, you want to make sure that you are in 
lower levels of your home, if it's a basement, if it's a, if it's uh, just the first floor, if you only if you don't have a basement, you want to make sure it's an interior room without windows and the bathroom, the laundry room, whatever that may be, and just make sure that you can continue to hear information and uh, then wait for the all clear to happen. Don't rely on the sirens for other people watching in other parts of the area. This is just the beginning of what could be multiple tornado warnings that do get issued today. Uh, Garrett, if we can go back to a full look at the at the radar here. Uh, you can see how quickly these storms are coming through. We also have another uh, severe thunderstorm warning in the northern part of our area. And uh, we have this thunderstorm that we've been monitoring down coming into Tama County. Meteorologist Nick Stewart is watching this storm right now. And Nick, have you seen any changes with this storm? We now have a confirmed tornado down to our south. Uh, things are going to likely happen very quickly. Yeah, you know, within the last about two to three minutes, we've seen the storm that we're on intensify very rapidly as well. Uh, we are just south of the Brooklyn area. Um, where we have uh, a pretty good developing wall cloud. We'll send you outside. You can kind of see the base of that storm right there, right above those trees. It's clearing out, and it's spinning a little bit near the – if you kind of look at it, you can see some scud fingers that are sticking up in there. Again, so – we are watching our storm very closely as well. There's nothing that's really holding our back or holding this storm back uh, compared to the one that is off to our south and east as well. So we're going to continue to watch this storm. If this storm, for whatever reason, does not want to do it, uh, we can jump right back on 80 and intercept that tornado warning storm as it approaches the Iowa City metro area within about the next hour or two. But again, our storm for now looks very visually um, impressive right near the Brooklyn area. That hook, that circulation passing just west of Montezuma. Uh, yeah, and that's, uh, you know, kind of the concern that we see that lowering. And so that is um, kind of that first indication, as Nick was talking about. You get a wall cloud to drop down. Then you get the funnel cloud to develop. And the scud fingers he was talking about are just these kind of uh, scary-looking clouds that may look like funnel clouds. But we're looking for rotation if uh, it would be in terms of a tornado. Um, there's not uh, a really tight just look at the uh, reds and the greens, but there's certainly some broad rotation ongoing as Nick was noting that he could see there. So he's just around the Brooklyn area and uh, looking down to the south and west at this storm. So if your thunderstorm warning still continues for this, where 60 mile per hour winds and large hail still possible. But further down to the south is where uh, we have the confirmed tornado in going into Keokuk County right now. So let's go down to that storm, uh, Garrett, if we can. And um, I know that uh, Kaysen also posted the Skycam image that we had earlier. So still some, still rotation ongoing here as it's coming into Keokuk County, east of Hendrick and uh, Highway 149 and Highway 78. If it's happening, it's happening right there. Uh, Kaysen, have we heard anything else from the Weather Service in terms of uh, anything with the storm? Um, just kind of tracking things out a little bit more. There haven't been a whole lot of updates. Obviously, when we were looking off the camera, a lot of people were just kind of mentioning that it still looked like there might be a little bit of a lowering with that, uh, what was a confirmed tornado, um, just kind of on the ground. But other than that, there hasn't been a whole lot of other reports about that. There have been a couple of reports from emergency managers just about uh, some hail that's been about quarter size to maybe an inch at times. So uh, that's obviously one of the other threats we've been dealing with uh, with this storm was uh, a lot of high volume hail coming out of it and a lot of very large hail. Yeah, then we've seen a lot of it. In fact, we've been seeing some um, images of what looks like it's literally snowing and um, the, instead it's just hail coming down and covering the ground and some large hail too. This storm actually had a history of producing some large hail. So um, there's still the possibility that hail signature is not quite as strong, um, but it, it had been producing up to baseball size hail around Centerville. And then we started to see the evolution as it came into this area that's been largely untouched by storms. We have high instability right now. We have a lot of warmth and moisture in place, and we have a lot of wind shear or spin in the atmosphere. Atmosphere. That is why we have a PDS tornado watch out and now why we are seeing uh, at least one confirmed tornado in the area so far that is moving into uh, Keokuk County and through Keokuk County. So Garrett, let's zoom in on this and let's uh, tr look at the velocity and kind of time out again where this storm is. We have no uh, confirmation that the tornado is still on the ground, we're going to treat it as if it is. We at least know that the storm is capable of producing tornadoes and uh, we're going to keep an eye on this moving 
into Keokuk uh, County right now. Nick. We're going to go over to uh, Nick Stewart. What do you got, Nick? Yeah, that mo that's the Montezuma. Yeah, right now we are watching a funnel cloud developing. This is just south of the uh, Malcolm area, right near Highway 63, just south of Interstate 80. Um, it looks like it, just as you got to me, it's starting to kind of fizzle out a little bit, but it was a very tight little needle funnel uh, that was right above those wind turbines there. I'm um, just going to show that this storm, too, uh, can pose a threat, uh, but we're watching it very closely. As soon as this thing drops a tornado, we will let you know, guys. Rebecca, take it away. Yeah, absolutely. Uh Caught it right there in the beginning. I could see that there was that lowering happening. So there was a funnel cloud. I was talking about step two is basically funnel cloud coming down. And as soon as that makes contact, then we're talking about a tornado. So the weather service likely going to be keeping a close eye on that. They issued a, they issued a tornado warning. Uh, they did. It's they completely did. Completely different cell, actually. Um, so they issued a tornado warning on the north side of where Nick is yeah. in Tama County. And that's the one so, that Nick was looking at there. So now we have these two spots we're going to be keeping an eye on. So this is south of Tama now. Tornado warning goes until 445. And that is just south of Highway 30. And there's a, there's a couplet there too, the bright greens and the bright reds that um, uh, that is an area of concern. And then you can see Nick's image. That's further south on the storm. And uh, you can see there where there is certainly some lowering going on. Nick, it looks like that storm's trying to pick up again. That, that funnel cloud is dropping low once again. Yeah, you can see that needle right above that uh, right there. You can see it dropping almost right here live, uh, right above that wind turbine. You can see that really almost upside down triangle, right? Uh, that is that funnel cloud right there. We're watching it very closely. It looks like it's trying to descend even further. Again, this is right, we're looking right near the Malcolm area, just south of Interstate 80. This would be about US, six, uh, US 63. Uh, it does appear it's getting lower and lower with time. We might have a tornado here shortly. Uh, this funnel cloud is getting very, very close to the ground. It appears to be about halfway down right now. Uh, it is clearly yeah, spinning. Guys, I am almost willing to call that a tornado right now. Uh, it's very close to the ground. I was just uh, telling again, Kason to uh, let the weather right service know because we can, we can see it coming Send down here. Um, but that, that's clearly yep. a lowering happening right there, Nick. Are you seeing any debris getting kicked up yet? I don't see any debris, but let me tell you, the lightning is getting more intense. There's th certainly some um, low contrast in there as well. Um, it does appear that at least kind of hidden in the rain. This might be on the ground right now. We're watching it very closely. It's very obvious from our perspective um, that this storm is very dangerous. Um, it's spinning rapidly. We're seeing the, uh, the spin visually also on camera. Wow. Uh, the biggest spin appears to be um, probably between those uh, two wind turbines. That actually, that's dust. All right, confirmed tornado. You can see dust now. Confirmed tornado. You're watching it, watching it live right here on Iowa's News Now. Confirmed tornado right near the Malcolm area, US 63 uh, uh, near Malcolm. Rebecca? Yeah, absolutely. Keep it picture in picture with Nick here. So this is a storm that's near the Malcolm area. You just watched a tornado form live on the air. And that storm is just to the west of Iowa County heading toward Benton and Tama counties. We also have a warning for Tama County. So this storm, wow, has a history of producing uh, tornadoes. We have a confirmed tornado. Does the weather service, the weather service issued the warning. There you go. That's because of Nick. So we do have, um, we have this tornado on the ground. So Nick, um, it doesn't look like, you know, thankfully it's in an open field at the moment. Um, unfortunately, it's close to the town of Brooklyn um, and the, where that rotation is currently. But Nick, wow, you're watching the whole evolution of a tornado happening right now. So uh, what, are, what are you seeing uh, in terms of kind of visually on the ground there? We're, we're clearly seeing the, the d dust getting kicked up here with a tornado right now. There's a big plume of dust getting kicked up in the air. Uh, the good news is I don't see a lot of actual debris. I don't know if it's hit any structures yet, uh, but you can clearly see a lot of dirt that's being sucked up around this storm. That's going right through that wind turbine right now, spinning very, very clearly. Let me pan the camera a little bit right here. The good news is as far as I can tell, it has not hit any structures yet, but I mean, you can see the, the mass of that uh, column of dirt that's spinning around it. It is pretty wide. It's a pretty wide tornado, uh, very visual as well. Again, this will be right near the uh, Brooklyn area, uh, approaching I-80. 
Uh, we are on the county road that's just south of I-80, so it's not at I-80 yet, but if you do know people that may be traveling on I-80, get them to stop if they're going westbound at the Victor exit. If they're coming eastbound, get them to stop at Grinnell. Between Grinnell and Victor, this tornado is about to cross the interstate. Yeah, absolutely. Nick, did you, or Kaysen, did you tell the Weather Service we have yep. a confir confirmed tornado? Okay, so I'm waiting for them to update this warning here, but we do have tornado. You're watching it live. Yes, thankfully, Nick, we haven't seen it go toward any structures, um, but it is close to the town of Brooklyn. So let's go to Max very briefly here because I do want to show people uh, a tr the track of the storm. If we can take Max full and we'll go back to Nick. Uh, we do have right to the south of Malcolm crossing I-80 heading toward Brooklyn. Let's put the fan back on it, um, Garrett, so we can get some timing on it here. But these fast moving storms going to be heading toward the Brooklyn area 403. That's within five minutes. Hardwick, Hartwick, which is just outside of Iowa County, 409. Belle Plaine, 417. Blairstown, 425. So let's go back to that picture in picture with Nick. And uh, this is going to be heading into portions of Northwest Iowa County and parts of Southeast Tama and then Southwest Benton counties. And uh, you can still see that there's uh, there's still debris on the ground there. And uh, we're maybe losing a little bit of visuals as the, the clouds are getting a little lighter in the background. But uh, Nick still looks like tornado on the ground still ongoing there as we see the, the dust still getting kicked up. Yeah, it's a little hard to tell. It's starting to get a little bit more rain wrapped, it appears. Um, up here, I mean, you can kind of see, kind of see this RFD slot that kicks in. That's your clear air uh, that's wrapping around, which would indicate that right in there would be your tornado. It's it's hard to tell if it's still in progress right now. Um, I. Okay, so Scott Zimder, a photographer, he has a better view with it right now. He says it is still down, so he says the tornado is still in progress. Um, this is basically on top of US 63, about to cross Interstate 80. Uh, Zim, I think we need to move east to get out of this RFD. Rebecca, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Nick. We do right now have tornado in progress and it is just crossing I-80, and this is around the Brooklyn area. This also on the north side, don't want to discount this, there's uh, also some, some hail ongoing. Weather Service now saying confirmed tornado. We're sh we just showed you the tornado. It's happening. Thankfully, we haven't seen any debris in the sense of it hitting any structures or any trees. Certainly some dust getting kicked up. Uh, certainly some signs that it is uh, it's still on the ground there. But uh, this is a look at correlation coefficient, one of our radar products. A little hard to tell in terms of anything uh, going on here. Which is um, a good sign. So yes, that's a good sign that it's not, it, we, we'd see a lot of these blues if it was indicating uh, debris, but we're not seeing that. So that would be good news. Um, the, if we go back actually in time, Garrett, and we look at the evolution of this storm, um, you can see there were some bright greens and bright reds and oranges here. Bring it back, bring it back now to current time. And it's maybe getting a little bit broader, but there's still some of this bright green and bright red. So definitely do not want to discount that um, as the possibility of there still being a tornado on the ground. Kaysen, have we heard anything from the National Weather Service? Um, we still have. Uh, it, it's finally, they corrected it to now saying that it is observed, uh, located over Brooklyn, nine miles north of Montezuma, um, and obviously just moving quick to the northeast at 55 miles per hour. Other than that, though, they have just, they've just finally confirmed it and got to that. So, Let's do a picture in picture with Nick. Um, and... They are extending this warning now into portions of Benton and Iowa counties. So the spots we were just telling you about. Um, so Nick is continuing to follow this storm to the east. And uh, it definitely looks a lot more rain wrapped, unfortunately, from uh, when we were saying. I say unfortunately because we want to be able to tell you exactly what's going on. Nick, what are you seeing visually? Are you, uh, it, it's, it's a little hard to tell from the picture. Perhaps you're getting a bit better of a view. Yeah, so um, give me one second, one more. It'll keep going straight and it'll curve left towards 80. So we're doing a little navigating here. Um, yeah, we can't really see it clearly from our point of view. Um, we are kind of on the southeast side of this. It's turned into kind of an HP looking supercell. So 
any potential tornado here would be wrapped in rain. I will tell you that we are in the midst of some rather intense RFD. Nothing too strong, but we're getting some pretty strong wind gusts. Probably, I would guess, around 50 to 60 miles per hour there. On the backside, you can kind of see all the dust that's kind of flipping up towards the storm right now. Uh, we are about to start turning north. We're going to jump on Interstate 80, and then we're going to get a bit farther east to try and get in better position for the storm. Um, so Brooklyn, the storm is pretty much on you right now. Hard Hartwick, Victor, uh, this storm is heading in your direction shortly. Ultimately, uh, this will be start heading towards areas like Lador and Marengo as well. So we're going to kind of follow the storm northeastward as it approaches the heart of uh, Iowa and Benton counties. Yes, and uh, this is going to be crossing into Iowa County here shortly as it continues to move to the east. So uh, Nick is following that storm and you can see that he mentioned HP, that's high precipitation. So if uh, we go to max full here, you can see that um, there's there's these two spots with tornado warnings. We have Tama County. Uh, does not look like a very strong indication of a tornado there, which is good. But uh, we then have these bright greens and bright reds here, indicating that a uh, tornado is likely ongoing. We're going to just say it is because uh, this is certainly an area of concern. Nick showed it to you earlier. That's going to be moving to the north and east. And what I want to show you is that when I put the reflectivity on, we then have these bright reds and bright pinks uh, going on that's indicating heavy rainfall so when we say rain raptor hp high precipitation uh, that is an indication of um some very just heavy rain ongoing that's likely preventing us from getting a view of the tornado but then that's dangerous because we can't see it coming in and happening um i don't know mike if you still have the video the dot camera um but we let's go to that because this is important there's a camera here this is i-80 mile marker 192. this is absolutely what you do not want to do you don't want to stop under an overpass. Reason why is because if a tornado comes through, we're talking about you're creating a wind tunnel and this is going to be bad news uh, for everyone in there. And that is just going to create more problems. So this is absolutely what you do not want to be doing. If only I could tell these people that. But uh, this is uh, unfortunately a situation where if people are traveling, we know people are going to be traveling. But you have to move your car get off the road somewhere else and if you literally see a tornado in your path the best thing for you to do is get out of your car and actually go into a low-lying area like a ditch because your car just like an overpass has this area underneath it that can easily be then flipped an overpass is going to create a situation where you will quickly uh, find yourself getting hurt because of a tornado coming through. It's basically creating a wind tunnel and can create a worse situation. So hopefully people move along here soon. Thankfully, it does not look like a tornado is crossing quite right in this area, but we do have um, still some heavy rain ongoing and could be still some strong winds. So let's go back to radar here. Let's do the picture in picture with Nick as well uh, from the Road Warrior uh, when we can, because this storm uh, we're saying that we're treating this like the tornado is still on the ground. As far as we know, it is. And there has been some intense rotation with this storm. We saw the tornado form, and now uh, meteorologist Nick Stewart is continuing to follow it as it heads on to the east toward Iowa County. So just northeast of Brooklyn, likely now, going to cross into kind of this uh, corners region of the Tama County, Iowa County, Benton County, and Powasheet County it lines. It looks like these circulations are gonna start kind of merging a bit, which could very quickly diminish this thing if it does happen to merge like that. Yeah, we do have, um, it, this was part of, kind of part of like a line of storms, uh, one storm here, and then there were these two areas of rotation. So as they do come together, it's possible that that could um, end up leading to the tornado threat diminishing. But for now, we have a tornado warning confirmed. Sirens are going off in Lynn County. I just heard them um, yep. here at the studio. We do not have a warning for Cedar Rapids or Eastern or Lynn County right now. Uh, let's go full on max one here, but let's um, broaden this out a little bit. The reason why the sirens are probably going off is because we have a confirmed tornado and it is just on the edge of Lynn County here. So they may be doing this just as a precaution ahead of time. And the fact these storms are moving very fast. How fast are they moving, Garrett? How fast uh, was the saying? Last I saw was, I believe, around 50, 55 miles an hour. Let me double check that one. 
65, sorry, I am 65 miles per hour. So let's take a track on this storm here and uh, say 65 miles per hour. And we can take it into Lynn County too. And uh, we can show at least the trajectory of what that would be. And this would be Bell Plain at 419. That's within the next 10 minutes. New Hall at 433. And then the Cedar Rapids area, Central City, northwestern portions of Lynn County would be between 4, we'll call it 440, and 450. And uh, then, of course, it continues to the east. That's all things dep uh, depending on how this ends up going. I want to mention every town that I named does not mean that that's where the tornado is going, but there is a threat of seeing uh, this thunderstorm come on in. And we do have, um, as we've been talking about, some, some very high precipitation rates. Um, Garrett, I mean, this is uh, some very heavy rain that's likely going to block our view from, from being able to see this tornado. Absolutely, yeah. You're looking at almost, again, if this is where radar estimated, and if this cell were to just sit there for the next hour, you would be expecting between two to three, three and a half inches of rainfall within an hour. And again, these are moving rapidly, so you're not going to actually pick up that three inch rainfall, but that is still indicating a lot of rainfall, which is where the HP comes from that high precipitation. You get a lot of that, which makes that visibility very, very difficult, okay. especially with that rotation. Yes. Let's go down to the south with okay. the tornado warning. Um, and Mike, you can throw that picture up. We have a picture of from around the Richmond area of this, um, which does look like uh, could potentially be a tornado on the ground. And look at the velocity on this storm now. Uh, this is for Iowa County and just around Washington County. So there's certainly, um, it might be a, a little tough with the, uh, we're kind of just in between radars here, but mm -hmm. there's definitely rotation ongoing right around Highway 92. And we've been, uh, we've seen this storm before already produce a tornado. So the Weather Service is saying it's confirmed. And um, this is, so this is a new warning that's now been put out that extends into portions of Iowa and Johnson counties. And this is not including Iowa City and North Liberty just yet, but could. So Harper basically coming in there right now. Uh, Kinross 418, Wellman uh, around 423, Tiffin 438, and then toward Iowa City, North Liberty around 440. So we have the one storm that's coming into the northwest side of Iowa County and another one on the southeast side of Iowa County. Uh, Kaysen, have you heard any information about this storm? They're, they're still saying this is the Keokuk County. They're saying tornado confirmed still. Yeah, uh, trying to monitor National Weather Service chat when it doesn't work, does not work out <laughs> here. Open down very recently. well, but um, open this one down here. Let's see if, uh, if they're saying. Want well, to continue with this too while they are figuring that out for the time being. It's just a couple of safety reminders too for those who do have those sirens going off. A couple of good things too. Just remember, making sure you are in your safe place. We've been talking about it all week with it being Severe Weather Awareness Week, being sure you're going through your severe weather plans, making sure if you have not put that together, well, now would be a really good time to be actually uh, exercising something at least. And first step would obviously be seeking shelter. If, again, if you are within that path and at least hearing those sirens going off for the time being, um, that's going to be within your basements, interior uh, walls. If you can within your home, stay away from those exterior walls, away from the windows, and especially for those of you in apartments, lowest level, stay away from those exterior walls. Same, same kind of thing, kind of like a house too, and just get to the lowest level that you can, uh, especially for those of you in the apartments and whatnot. Absolutely. And this is especially as the situation has been rapidly evolving. Um, Garrett, let's go to the broad view. Let's say wide for a second. Okay. Uh, let's pause the radar and take the lightning off. Yes. So we have multiple tornado warnings ongoing right now. We have a confirmed tornado near Kyoto. We just got word from the National Weather Service from a spotter there. Confirmed tornado near Kyoto, and that is in Keokuk County, heading into southeastern Iowa County and southwestern Johnson County could potentially clip portions of western Washington County. We then have the tornado that Nick brought us that is coming into portions of northwest Iowa County, Benton County, and could potentially continue into Lynn County. And then the Weather Service is continuing another warning that is up near Tama uh, and is moving into Benton County there as well. We do right now have, um, is there something new coming in, Kaysen? Yeah, uh, obviously that, uh 
uh, the tornado is observed for Iowa, Johnson, Keokuk, and Washington. That that uh, specific storm that's moving up. Uh, this is just uh, two minutes ago. Confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado located over Harper, or it's ten miles east of Sigourney, and this is moving north. Sigourney. Sigourney, excuse me. So that's that. That's our. And they have here the National Weather Service uh, reports indicate that there's possibly two tornadoes on the ground in the area. Wow. Oh, yeah. So that's the storm we we're talking about. That would explain the messy signature. Yeah, we've been having a hard time kind of uh, adjusting. So you can kind of see these two spots here, potentially, yeah. where we're seeing some rotation. There's kind of this broad area um, and potentially over here, too. So this is, uh, there's confirmed that we, we got word Kyoto. So possibly two tornadoes on the ground. We're going to treat it like there's two tornadoes on the ground right now. Uh, in, this is Keokuk County. It's northeast of Sigourney. We've been talking about this area for a while. Highway 159 and moving just to the west of Kyoto and then moving to the north and east into portions of Iowa and potentially Johnson counties. Let's zoom in here, Garrett, uh, around the Kyoto area and check uh, if there's some more cities in here that we can kind of point out. But this would be around Harper. So the city of Harper is basically right in between these two signatures. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we under, unfortunately hear about some damage coming out of the Harper area. Highway 159 in between Sigourney and Kyoto. If you know of anyone in this area, you want to make sure that they're aware of t at least a tornadoes on the ground, possibly two. That is confirmed and two tornadoes on the ground. They're confirming they two tornadoes on the ground. Now, moving through Keokuk County, so North English, Kinross, Wellman, uh, Kyoto, Harper, you better already be in your safe place. And this is going to continue to move to the north and east for this, this tornado warning. And then we're watching areas like Parnell and southwestern portions of Johnson County. So uh, this area, let's go down to the south here, uh, where we have Highway 159 and Harper. And this is going to quickly cross Highway 159. And we have two of them, right, that are on the ground here. They're confirming that. And it's, uh, it's going to be a little tough to see the signature uh, of the tornado, but we're going to be just assuming that in this area along, around Highway 159 that we have the um, two tornadoes on the ground. That's going to be then heading toward Highway 22, South English, between South English and Wellman. So if you're in South English or Wellman, North English, Parnell, you want to be in your safe space right now because the storm is moving incredibly fast. It is likely going to be difficult to see. If we have that photo from you had earlier um, around Richmond or uh, uh, that you said, Mike, there we go. So this is at least one of the tornadoes that was seen from Washington County, and that is a large tornado. And there's another one. This is a situation you cannot go out and try and look at this thing. It is going to come through so fast. You need to be in your safe space right now in the basement in the lowest level of your home. Okay. Go. What is up? Uh, I was saying, uh, Nick was saying, go to the cam uh, Corville camera, which I do believe Kaysen is pulling up. Should be on okay. the Max one. He's going to pull it up on that computer, Kaysen. Um, let's go back to Max here. And uh, we have then this area of concern um, to the north where um, meteorologist Nick Stewart is. And he has been keep he had been keeping an eye on this storm that is moving through uh, into now Benton County. And um, Nick, do you have any other information about uh, anything that you've seen with this storm? Yeah, what I can tell you is that we haven't seen any reports of damage right in the vicinity of Malcolm or Brooklyn, which is very good news. When we were watching that tornado, it didn't appear uh, that there was any large flying debris in the air. Right now, we are on Interstate 80. We are heading eastbound. Uh, we're trying to beat this storm that is approaching the Iowa City metro area as it moves through portions of Keokuk and Washington counties. Um, i got to tell you that we're going to be cutting it a little close, so we're, of course, going to play things very, very safely. These are storms you don't want to mess with, um, so we're going to be cutting coming in either in front of it or behind it, depending on uh, where we're at in relation to the storm at the time. Uh, the storms, I can tell you, off to our um, northwest, uh, they have all kind of congealed into a big line. Uh, this appears to be more of a wind threat up that way. Don't want to discount the tornado threat entirely just due to um, the amount of wind shear in place, but I do think we're starting to transition more into a wind threat up that way while ahead of us as we approach Johnson County, Washington County, and Keokuk County. Uh, the main threat will be, of course, the large and extremely dangerous tornado which has been reported approaching that area. Rebecca? 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. And this is something that we were concerned about was the fact that we could have multiple tornadoes and we not only have multiple tornado warnings that are ongoing, but we have confirmation of two tornadoes ongoing at the same time. And this is around the Kyoto area, Harper, South English, Kinross, North English, Wellman. These are the locations that could be impacted by a large tornado. Garrett, let's go to the correlation coefficient and see if we can uh, pick out anything in terms of debris. This gives us an indication. That's a muddy picture. Yeah. So uh -huh. uh, it's a little hard Here. to tell, but you'd be looking at blues that would indicate if you maybe if you catch the Des Moines radar. Yeah. Um, it, and see if you can slide it off and see if we can if we can maybe see. Um, I mean, there's some blues showing up there and some greens. It's hard to say if that is certainly debris, but based on the image we were seeing of, of the large uh, tornado, it is possible that in those spots um, we, we do have debris, unfortunately, which would mean pieces of mm -hmm. trees, homes, uh, whatever it was in its path, farms, anything like that that could potentially be lofted up. And that is why you need to take this seriously. It is uh, going to be kind of difficult to pinpoint those. Um, actually, you can kind of see a little bit near yeah. Kyoto and then Kyoto south of the North just, English area. Right. It, it's it's going to be a little tough. We're we're going, but we are going to just assume this entire area. Uh, we need to really keep an eye on here between Kyoto and North English. Um, so this is an observed tornado. It is two tornadoes that have been ongoing that the Weather Service has confirmed in portions of. Keokuk County here into Iowa County, Johnson County, and then this is right on the line of Washington County, so Northwest Washington County. And these areas, North English, Kyoto, Wellman, you need to be in your safe place now. These storms are moving very fast, and we have seen rapid development from these storms as well as a fast motion to them that is going to lead to the potential for these tornadoes to come through very quickly, and they may also be hard to see. If we can switch back to the reflectivity too. So I do want to um, add too, there was a latest report um, as of about 4-18, uh, uh, where there's still two tornadoes on the ground just west of Kyoto, so it's likely those two pockets of circulation we were looking at. The Kyoto one itself looks a little more consistent, yes. but again, that North English that I'm not sure if it's there or if it's maybe a little bit closer. It's, it's, it's really hard to tell. Yeah. That signature, though, unfortunately, is very close to Kyoto. So we can, we can really hope that that's um, not right in town. But this is uh, just would be north of uh, or possibly just to the west of Kyoto. But this would be possibly rain wrapped. Uh, there is a I time when we may, ha may be able to see uh, oh, to the north here we can. Oh, yep. there we go. Yep. Now the yep. latest radar image. There we go. We can see the, we can see that signature and a bit a better. Spike there too. So, that is where you're going to see the rotation, a tornado on the ground, and p perhaps a second one to the west. Uh, that the weather service within the last couple of minutes still saying confirmed two ongoing tornadoes, right here around Kyoto, heading now into Washington County and around the Wellman area going across Highway 22. I'm gonna go ahead and pop up the correlation coefficient again, just kind of rule out yet. So that little spiking signature you're seeing here again, usually an indication to possibly hail and or unfortunately debris in this instance, and that's sort of the thing you really don't wanna see, especially when you're dropping into those blues. That is usually when you consider those darker colors, those darker blue colors is when you start shifting more towards that debris signature. Um, and unfortunately, when you combine that with the rotation that is fairly evident just off towards the north of Kyoto now, um, yeah, that would be what I would consider probably debris being lofted um, at that point. Even looking at the radar itself, make sure I'm popping up the right one here, turn that lightning off. Still some pretty high values of reflectivity, these purples that you're seeing right along here. That would be what you would consider a hail core, but normally, uh, based on where the radar is positioned, you would see these hail spikes on the back end of things, something like right about there, but it's not. It's actually out ahead of where that little hooking shape is, which is most likely indicating that that area of circulation now is just off towards the north side of the Kyoto area. Um, so for and those the of weather you, service is saying one tornado now. Now to one tornado, that would so make sense. So they're saying one tornado, and we've seen pictures of large destructive tornadoes. Uh, throw up the picture of the of the tornado. Uh, okay, so yeah, you can wow. definitely see one on the right side, much larger, and one on the left side that's a little bit thinner. 
Absolutely. That's um, that's, that's two. Two tornadoes. <laughs> wow. So um, that is what was ongoing, and and those are typically. So there you can see. Wow. You can see this wrapping around of the clouds within the tornado. That is a large tornado, uh, and unfortunately looks like close to uh, town there, but it's hard to say how, how close uh, as it is off in the distance, but quite the structure with that tornado there. And you can see the vertically wrapped cloud around the storm, indicating just the inflow uh, and the rotation with that storm. So that's at least one of them. And then there was a second for a time. So the weather service is saying that we're down to one. And that would be north of Kyoto, heading very close to Wellman. So this is a situation that uh, we can see things change very quickly. When you have two dual tornadoes, that's typically pretty difficult to sustain that sort of energy. And um, this is for portions of Washington, Johnson, Iowa counties, getting out of Keokuk County now. Wellman is the area of concern right now. So this has been one tornado. Um, this had been two tornadoes previously. Now we are, we're down to one. We have additional tornado warnings to the north and west. I don't want to discount the fact that we do still have a tornado on the ground. If you're in Wellman, the tornado is coming to you and you need to be in your safe place. We then have this mess of tornado warnings to our north. Uh, we have six. 60 miles an hour. 60 it's miles per hour for the storms. We have multiple tornado warnings. Could be six too. Um, we have one that's confirmed, which was the one that Nick was on earlier. And we have some rotation that's just southwest of Vinton right now. Um, we do have areas like New Hall, Norway, Belle Plaine under tornado warnings. I don't want to discount you. We haven't seen much information out of these um, so far. And we are going to continue to um, see if the Weather Service has anything that's coming in. They Not have seen anything uh, dime sized hill west of Coggin, which is getting into northwestern portions of um, northwestern portions of Lynn County. Um, tornado on the ground heading to Kelowna and no power in Wellman. So Wellman's already seen power get knocked out. And this is continuing to move then toward Wellman. Right, okay. And this yep. is crossing into Highway 22 in Washington County. And this is going to come very close to the town of Wellman. Apparently, Wellman already doesn't have power. But if you know anyone in Wellman and you can text them or call them, their cell phone should still hopefully work and make sure they're in their safe place. If you know anyone traveling down this way. Um, and this is then going to push into portions of Johnson County, Amish, Wynham, Tiffin. And... This would be um, just to the south of I-80 and near Highway 22. And this has been a large tornado we've seen multiple times. Uh, we've had indications of this storm producing a tornado, and we have had uh, tornado warnings with this storm for about two hours now since it came out of Ottumwa. And it has been continuing to move to the north and east. And there is still indication that the tornado is on the ground. There's a spotter on this storm. So we're going to know uh, once it does lift, but very close to the town of Wellman. Um, and still kind of a muddy picture on velocity here. But we do have rotation still ongoing and a, spot, a storm chaser who is on the storm saying that there is still a tornado on the ground. That has been large and destructive heading toward Wellman area may end up just to the west, but if you're in Wellman or anywhere around it, make sure that you are sheltering, sheltering right now. The storm's going to quickly then cross into the portion, southern portions of Iowa and Johnson counties, just to the south of I-80. So if you know anyone traveling on 80 right now, that's also somewhere that we need to be getting off of I-80 and getting to shelter because this storm's going to continue to push to the north and east. It's not to say that it's going to stay on the ground, but when we are talking about it has now been extended. When we're talking about the situation we're in today, we have a PDS, particularly dangerous situation tornado watch issued. This is for long lived intense tornadoes. This could be that situation. We can hope it's not, but um, it uh, hopefully is, is not the situation, but we now have this tornado warning extending into North Liberty, Iowa City and Johnson County. Nick, what's going on? 
Yeah, right now we're heading uh, eastbound on I-80. Uh, we are approaching the Oxford area at this hour. Uh, we are definitely thinking we're going to get ahead of the storm in time before uh, it approaches Iowa City. So we'll be able to give Iowa City kind of a good idea of what's going on. Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, we are watching debris falling from the sky right now. I've been able to see a few uh, piece of debris flying on our windshield. Our wipers are kind of clearing some of that debris, uh, just as a, a, another indication that this did produce a pretty significant tornado off to our south. Uh, we are getting debris falling out of the sky along I-80 near Oxford. Rebecca. I, I can see it. I can see it flying at your car. Um, yeah. yeah, it's uh, that is a very unfortunate situation because that is, you can see the debris ball, debris on west of Wellman. There is a large tornado that's ongoing. You can see debris getting tossed where Nick is. You can see debris that's been getting tossed to the north. But there is significantly, there's definitely that area around Wellman where there All is the debris, debris in the road. That, that, is, uh, that has been picked up and it's getting, it's indicated on radar. Uh, it can tell if it's precipitation or right, I think we're going to beat debris. this hail core. We should be good. So, um, yeah, Nick, you're saying there's some debris that's on the road there. Yeah, we're see it looks like kind of agricultural debris, like uh, you know, some stuff that was left in fields from the the harvest. Yeah. What's that? Corn yeah, corn stalks, exactly. Like corn stalks and it leaves and like things like long, that. Yeah. Uh, that's the kind of material that we're seeing right now. And that's at least good in the sense that hopefully that's all that it is, but unfortunately, very close to Kyoto and Wellman has uh, the storm come through. And of course we know that there are still farms out there. There are still homes that are in those more open areas. Um, Kaysen, have we heard anything from the weather service in terms of damage? Uh, I have not seen any reports from them, at least right now in terms of damage. I've been looking also on social media just to see kind of some of obviously the emergency managers in that area. I have not seen any reports, at least at this time of damage, uh, but we're, it, we do have those reports that it continues to be on the ground at this time, and it's large and extremely dangerous, even if it is maybe uh, a little bit uh, rain wrapped or whatnot, if you right. can't see it. So that, well, that, that makes it even more dangerous, unfortunately. So, so yeah, that's, that's really, we continue to see a lot of the same stuff for right now. And the fact that Nick is still seeing debris getting tossed uh, as far away as he is, uh, that is an indication that um, this is likely still ongoing. And it may be tough to see. And this is not something that you want to be standing outside in at all because debris could get tossed around anywhere in this warning box. So we have around the Wellman area, the rotation here of a large tornado that's going to then continue to the north and east. Garrett, let's go to reflectivity. Maybe we can get a little bit better of a, a picture on this. Yeah, um, that's pretty clear there. Yes. Let's put a, let's zoom out a little bit and show the timing toward um, Johnson County here. So right around the Wellman area, it just, it looks like just west of Wellman. We can hope that's the case. West of Wellman, tornado on the ground. Windham uh, toward 440. Tiffin, 448. North Liberty, 453. Solon, 459. Worthington Acres, 503. Cedar Rapids, if it continues to the north and east, around 508. And around North Liberty, 453, we're talking about same situation for Iowa City. If you know anyone who's traveling, I know the, the game starts in about uh, three and a half hours. And there may be people who want to go down to Iowa City. I know they canceled the watch party at Carver. There's still other places that are going to be holding these watch parties and they may have shelters, but if you're driving, that's not going to be the best shelter for you. So if you know anyone who's about to head onto I-80, they need to stop and they need to get to shelter because this storm, if it continues, could cross I-80. And it is going to be moving out of Wellman into this cross area of Iowa and Johnson counties, moving to the north and east. And this may make it just to the west of Iowa City it depends on how it continues to track here because everything's moving to the east. The storm is moving to the north and east and then uh, could potentially cross around uh, Highway 1 and I-380. If you don't mind, Rebecca, I'm going to pipe in really quick, too. Absolutely. I know we do have this one confirmed on the ground. I don't want to also discount uh, lately the past few radar updates near Vinton right now. Um, does look moderately concerning. The uh, couplet has certainly been growing tighter and tighter and tighter. You're seeing more of these vibrant colors, of these reds and greens putting together. 
usually indicating, you can see there that uh, tornado warning just now being extended. That has been a kind of an indication as you've been following along the Williamsburg one there just further down to the south. That has been something I've been watching kind of off towards the side. A lot more of um, a lot of this kind of precipitation being wrapped around into it. That's another main issue with this little area of circulation. Why it may not be confirmed is because it is so heavily wrapped around in rain. There's a lot of heavy precipitation within this little bit just off towards the west of Benton there. Likely going to be seeing in if there is rotation somewhere in this little hooking area, which is usually kind of an indication that there is something there, especially when you pair that with the velocity itself. Um, so likely could be something going on there as well. Rather concerning moving its way into uh, the Vinton Cedar Point areas as well here within the next uh, couple of minutes. Um, I do you want to double check the speed on that before I do plot anything on there? I'm seeing some damage around Hendrick, Iowa. And there was a home that was damaged um, if we want to search just for anyone, um, Mike or Kaysen around Hendrick and see if, um, we can find any more indication of damage there. But that would be with the tornado that the initial tornado down to the south. Um, and as Garrett's mentioning, it's not the only one, unfortunately. There's and a report too that, uh, two minutes ago that still has a visual on that tornado still on the ground. But this is the one where we've had confirmation. The issue with those other tornadoes to the north, too, is that there's a lot of rain. Yeah. A lot of rain. It's possible that we can't see it. Um, and the issue with this one is that we, I mean, let's zoom in on this, Garrett. You can see the bright, bright reds here. There is still a large tornado that's ongoing just north of Wellman. This is Johnson, the Iowa Road, First Avenue here. It crosses into Iowa and Johnson counties, and it's going to be heading toward Amish and to the north and east. And we still have confirmation of a large tornado on the ground right now. Mm. That's not good. You don't like to see that. Yep. So this is um, debris that is being tossed up in the air by this tornado, and that's that blue that you're seeing there. Uh, we do have a photo of what uh, we're getting uh, information. This is from Hendrick, which would be, uh, we were talking about Hendrick earlier. This would be with this storm and obviously the roof gone off of this home. And this could potentially be some of the damage that's getting tossed around. So that would have been just um, west of Richland down in southwestern Keokuk County, or no, Washington County. Yeah. This so is Northeast. a new warning that just got issued right now. So then we have, um, or uh, yeah, so sorry. So Hendrick would have been further down to the south and west. Then we have this new tornado warning on this storm for Washington County. Broad rotation there so far. This is, um, let's, can you get it so the, the banner shows, on, shows up on that one so I can yeah. see some information? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we got Washington and Riverside in this. And this is for Washington and southeastern Johnson County. There is no current um, confirmation of a tornado, but we've obviously seen them already happen today. So we need to treat each of these like a tornado is happening. And regardless, large hail, strong winds going to come with this, and heavy rain is ongoing with these thunderstorms. Let's do the whole picture here. Wellman and areas to the north and east into Johnson County. Tornado was on the ground. Be in your safe place now. We have tornado warnings that are then lining this whole area here and includes portions of northwest uh, Lynn County. We have tornado warnings coming out of Benton County heading toward Highway 20. We have other warnings heading into Black Hawk County. So this is a situation where we obviously have multiple warnings ongoing. We do know that the tornado around Wellman is confirmed and still on the ground and dangerous and destructive and has done damage and will continue to do so as it heads to the north and east toward I-80 in Johnson County. So let's kind of go through these, Garrett. Um, let's go to the north, north here south. and start here. We have a tornado warning. It's for Black Hawk, um, the one that's flashing here. Yeah, yeah. further north. So we have um, Black Hawk, Bremer, Grundy, Tama counties. Um, this one includes Allison, yep. Parkersburg, Waverly until 515 and could also have some um, maybe, rotation on there as well. yeah, uh, could have some hail with it here. 
not a huge signature, but some rotation around the Parkersburg area, and we haven't had any confirmation of a tornado here. We can go down to the south to the next one, which does include Waterloo, Grundy Center, Dyke. Um, hard to say. There's a couple of these notches. We had talked about the situation when the tornado, when the storm started to line up, that we could potentially see what's known as QLCS, a quasi-linear convective system. And so that is when you have a line of storms and you have these kind of little notches where you could also have quick spin ups that happen on the front end. That may be why they're issuing these tornado warnings. Uh, if we can go down to the south, I know you're doing a lot of things back there. Oh, it's good. So we then have this storm coming out of uh, the Marshalltown area into Tama County. Tama County and Benton County have been heard multiple times with this. Um, the, the one around Benton, though, that's certainly got a signature on it. Can you go back? to the Des Moines radar. Yeah, there we go. Much clearer there. Wow. So there's certainly a lot of rotation here right around west of Vinton. Highway 218 and Highway 150 heading to the north and east, likely to the northwest of Vinton here, still very close to Vinton. If you're in Vinton, you need to be in your safe place five minutes ago. That's heading toward Walker and northeast Benton County and northwest Lynn County. We have multiple tornado warnings encompassing these storms because there could be multiple areas of rotation ongoing. Then we go down to the south, and I'm hearing the lightning and thunder here in Cedar Rapids. Um, we don't have any warnings for Cedar Rapids. We do, though, have this storm that's coming up from the north, and we have additional storms coming in from the west. So these are tornado warned. It's possible that Lynn County could quickly become under a tornado warning here, but we don't have any confirmation of tornadoes here at the moment. Then down to the south, this is the area of concern where we have the tornado that's still confirmed, likely right here. There's some rotation here. It's, been like setting clear, it's not, really. not terribly um, clear there either, but that's probably where the tornado is. Has there been anything, Kaysen, from the Weather Service on the Keokuk Johnson storm? Yes, uh, uh, we're also getting reports uh, from Ely that they kind of saw the same thing that Nick saw of reports of corn stalk, debris that, or debris falling that is just sky. falling from the sky and they are have calm conditions still right now. That, so that kind of just shows you how far this debris is being lofted, picked up, and then thrown however many miles away at this time. Uh, that tornado warning continues. Um, it's located over Frytown. Uh, just keep in mind here as we start to enter more of these larger metropolitan areas. This is 11 miles southwest of Iowa City right now. Yes. We're starting to enter, obviously, a little bit farther into Johnson County. That's Something concerning to, to me because we had, and we're going to go to meteorologist Nick Stewart. Nick, Frytown. We saw that tornado a couple years ago, and, Hi, yeah, right up. Uh, and that, and now we're we're getting close to Johnson County and some more populated areas, unfortunately. Yeah, right now we're right near Tiffin. Uh, we're, one, getting some small hail that's falling right here, but we're also getting still some debris falling. You can kind of see on the ground we're seeing corn stalks and things like that, but our main focus is what's going on off to our east and south, or excuse me, south and southwest. Uh, we're watching a, a big area of circulation. It's starting to get pretty wrapped in rain, um, so we're probably not going to have the greatest visual on it anymore. Zim, if you want to maybe start getting east of here. All right, uh, we're watching the area right there. It would be somewhere in that mass of rain. Uh, the circulation to me appears to be strengthening once again, uh, just southwest of Tiffin, just southwest of where we are. So we're going to get out of here, get to a safe place. Again, you can see all the debris that's on the ground right here uh, still still falling from the sky at this hour. And again, this is a dangerous storm approaching the Iowa City Metro. We're going to keep you updated as we head east on 80. Rebecca. Yeah, this is a dangerous situation. It's telling of um, of how strong this tornado is. The fact that we are getting reports of debris in Ely. That is that's in Ely. That's getting way north uh, from where the storm is right now. So we have the entire team working here for you as we are watching this storm that has been pushing debris well to the north of where it is. Um, we still have a dangerous storm on the ground, a tornado. So we have a report from the Johnson County Emergency Managers tornado at Frytown right now. That is in southwestern Johnson County. I'm going to see if it will pop up here on the radar for us. But 
Amish, Sharon Center, Windham, Cosgrove, Ooh. Iowa City, Coralville, Oxford, North Liberty, Newport. If you're in these areas, you need to be sheltering right now. If you know anyone who is driving and going to be on I-80, they need to stop and get to shelter right now. This is a large and destructive tornado that is moving through Johnson County. Now we had a tornado in Frytown a couple of years ago, then moved toward Iowa City and thankfully lifted before it got there. But we now have a situation with a large tornado that has not shown any signs of stopping and has been producing debris and lofting it. Thankfully, that debris so far has been stuff out of fields. Mm -hmm. And we can certainly hope that it stays that way. Yeah. But if not, it is, is uh, it's is not Nick something we want to hear. Did, what, Garrett? Does Nick head to ease right now? Y yes. Okay. Or he was in Tiffin. Yep, it does look like he's heading to ease. That uh, whole couplet does seem to be kind of wrapping into itself a bit and moving just off towards the west uh, over the past few frames, which. West is a good spot, at least we're staying to the west of Iowa City because you do not want this to shift off towards the east because then you start getting those heavily uh, populated areas uh, into the Iowa City. Put the velocity area. back on. Absolutely. That does not look good. No. Um, I, I was just looking at 45. it in another, in another area uh, on, on my phone. Um, there is a very tight rotation indication there's still a tornado ongoing here. Let's, let's cheat it a little further to the north and east because I'm concerned about that a more north. It's been coming out of Wellman. It has been going a little north. I want to I wanna talk right there. So Coleridge Mall and North Liberty. This is just to the west of Iowa City. It does have a little bit more north movement to it, so that would help Iowa City. But there are still very populated areas that it is getting close to now. This is that very close, very close to Tiffin, Oxford, North Liberty. Just to the west of Iowa City, getting close to the I-380, I-80 interchange is where this rotation is heading toward. It is likely going to be difficult to see this tornado. There is no reason for you to try and look at it. There is a hundred reasons why you should get into your safe place right now. We There's have right there. heavy precipitation ongoing and it is going to be difficult to see it anyway. We have signs of debris obviously getting lofted very far to the north and we have confirmation of a tornado around Frytown and this is around now Tiffin, getting close to Tiffin, a strong tornado it's going to continue to head to the north and east. And here you can see all the debris into portions of Lynn County, as, as we mentioned Ely. So if you're seeing debris falling from the sky, that's because of a tornado. Thankfully, so far, we haven't seen much outside of corn stalks, but unfortunately, it's heading into a more populated area right now. Down the south side of the Cedar Rapids area, too, here. And it does seem to be slowing down a little bit, which does kind of slow that down. I think they had it down to about 30 miles per hour instead of hauling like it has been. Well, that's good, certainly. But not good that it's still going. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we have um, tornado ongoing. I'm just trying to see if I'm, if I'm getting any information here. Um, but I know that the sirens are going off in Johnson County and Iowa City. And it's an exciting day in Iowa City and for Hawkeye fans. And I know that may people may be traveling down to Iowa City. The game's not for a little while. If you can just wait, I know people are getting off of work soon. If you know someone who's trying to go down to Iowa City, let's just wait. We got time before the game starts. We don't need to risk our lives for it. There is an indication of a strong tornado to the southwest of Iowa City that's going to move likely to the west of Iowa City but there are still other towns in its path. Let's zoom in here, Garrett. Absolutely. Because very close to Tiffin. I don't know why Tiffin's not popping up on our, on our towns. That's but Tiffin's question. about here. We have Oxford, we have North Liberty, and we have Iowa City. This is west of Highway 1, going across Highway 6 very close to the Coral Ridge Mall. I know this is a very populated area. 
If we could get the uh, DOT camera, um, Mike, you could maybe pull one up too. There's a lot of cameras. I have our Coralville uh, Sky Cam Coralville also Sky pulled Cam. up if we want to look at that. I, can't, I cannot yeah. see anything really out of it right now, but that is pointed off toward that southwest a little bit. Okay, and it's probably going to be really hard to see anything going on. I believe Nick is on, is he on the same one as well? Um, uh, I know he's he's been, uh, he's, he's around Tiffin and uh, heading close like to that way. in the Coralville area, just north of the mall currently. Yeah. Nick, are you are you seeing anything from where you are right now? Yeah, what I can see is that there's clearly I can see the air circulation that's approaching Tiffin. Uh, unless it's wrapped in rain, I don't see anything visually, but what I can tell you it is it is a very mean sky. There's a lot of these little fingers that are dancing around the bottom uh, of this base of the storm. It is very quickly approaching uh, Tiffin and Coralville at this hour. This thing could plant. I've seen this look before. I've seen this look many times. This thing could plant a big tornado really at any moment. As far as I can tell, it's not at the moment, but it is It is trying very hard. There's a lot of these little fingers that are dancing around trying to kind of consolidate into one area. It appears to maybe trying to do so right here, right down the uh, on ramp. We are on I 380 just north of Coleridge Mall. A uh, lot of lightning with the storm, and the air of interest is right behind us right now. As far as I can tell, I can't see anything, but uh, it may be trying to do something uh, very quickly. Rebecca. And have we have we seen anything else from the Weather Service? Because I know the, that we had um, Johnson County Emergency Management. The last that we heard was around 442, Frytown. Uh, 449 observed a uh, tornado on the ground located near Tiffin or near Iowa City moving northeast. And that's at just their 55. warning. So yeah. we have spotters that are on these storms. And as Nick mentioned, the other issue with this here, too, is that we could quickly see um, this once again drop a tornado. I will say. The signature on it did loosen up a little bit, but there's still definitely rotation on going around Cosgrove and heading toward Tiffin. So if you are in these areas, Cosgrove, Tiffin, around the Coral Ridge Mall, North Liberty, anywhere on Highway 6 near Oxford, this is where a large tornado could potentially still come through. We could see uh, a possibility of still a tornado on the ground, or we are seeing the possibility of a tornado coming down again. Tornado warning continues here until 515. So let's zoom out and I, I do not want to at all neglect what is going on in other parts of the area. Um, but this has been a very serious situation down to the south. Uh, we still have um, what could potentially be another area of rotation down here. Uh, yeah, we, we, there, they were warning this a couple of times. We have uh, then Washington County Tornado warning that's now around uh, Riverside, Washington. Uh, if you want to zoom, go down further to the south and west, maybe. I'm not sure what they're, if um, they're warning this whole area here. It, it's probably up here, high, approaching Highway 218 uh, in terms of the rotation. Uh, we have a tornado warning that extends with this storm into now the rest of Johnson and parts of Lynn County. I did get. Um, an indication we have debris falling here in Cedar Rapids from this storm too. So um, there's some, one of our engineers outside, grass and um, some corn stalk falling from the sky here in Cedar Rapids. And you can see that debris shield. So that is telling of what a powerful tornado was going on or possibly still going on. And so that warning goes into southeastern Lynn County. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning that's to the west here of uh, Cedar Rapids, a very large, broad area. And these tornado warnings here that are in Benton and Buchanan and Lynn counties. There's been this rotation around Vinton. I don't know that we've heard anything, but there's certainly know. been some uh, signs of rotation there around Benton County. Yeah, it's kind of looking back over the past few things. Haven't really seen for the most part, much of anything from the Vinton area other than just continuing to continue it with that rotation signature um, as it does continue to move its way uh, 
pass at least a Vinton area, fortunately. Uh, so for those of you in Vinton, you're most likely in the clear at this point as that does continue to move its way off towards the north and east. However, uh, areas that are still well off towards the north and east uh, of that area of rotation, that would include Independence, Walker, Manchester, Ryan as well. Most of those expected to be within the area of the next uh, couple of minutes or so. Don't have any speeds on it recently, so if I can, can't grab that really fast, then we can kind of get an idea of where that'll be headed here in the next couple of minutes or so. Um, let's see here, northeast at about 40 miles per hour, so that'll be able to grab that. Northeast, 40 miles an hour. It's around Walker, Quasquiton, Winthrop, Manchester, Strawberry Point, New Vienna. And this, uh, even if these storms aren't, you know, absolutely producing a tornado, we're still talking about strong winds, could be around 60 miles per hour, and hail. There's been some hail that's been ongoing in other spots. Um, we do have a picture, Mike, that you want to bring up around the Iowa City area. Of There's certainly some lowering there, and um, it doesn't seem like there's much on the ground. Hard to tell, but um, we'll, be, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Meteorologist Nick Stewart still out in the Road Warrior around the, it was around the Coral Ridge Mall. Nick, um, what are you seeing right now? It, it looks uh, pretty intense in terms of the thunderstorm that's coming through there now. Yeah, uh, we're definitely uh, punching on I-80 uh, right near Iowa City. Uh, we're just on the north side of Iowa City on I-80 heading back east. Uh, we are trying our best to try and get east. Uh, the problem is the circulation is now completely wrapped in rain. I will tell you there is a pretty tight circulation right now forming right near Coralville. So if you're in Coralville, western side of Coralville, uh, between Coralville and North Liberty, uh, this is an immediate threat. This is what I was talking about. I can't see anything visually, but looking at radar, that exactly where we were looking uh, looks very intense now um, on radar. And to just point out again, it's so impossible to see what's happening. Things are so heavily wrapped in rain. Uh, that's why we've been trying to stay well ahead of the storm because we really cannot see things too well, and we want to make sure we're in safe. And if we are staying well away from the storm, you absolutely should be too. Um, so we are going to get east of Iowa City and try and figure out our next play here as things go a little bit more on the wind side of things. Rebecca. The good news is that that is to the west of Iowa City in terms of the circulation. But there's certainly, uh, right around the Tiffin area, is a concern, still a heavy, heavily populated area. The Weather Service has now extended this warning for a confirmed tornado into Lynn County. I hear the sirens going off once again in Cedar Rapids. Now, Cedar Rapids is not included in this warning oh. right now, but we do go have... Go to the Coralville Sky Cam. Take the Coralville uh, Sky Cam. Okay, go to the Coralville Sky Cam. Tornado, yeah. possibly on the ground. Yeah. Hard to tell, again, rain wrap, but... That's so moving. can you pop me up in front of the camera in case and if you can try and keep with the tornado. I'm going to try and keep staying. Do you have it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, if you can put me um, on the wall with the, with the sky cam because what we're seeing here, sorry, I just popped in like magic. Uh, we're seeing this kind of area right here where there's possibly a tornado right here. That would be west of, or uh, yeah, west of the Coral Ridge Mall. It's very hard to see, but we are definitely seeing uh, funnel, sort of some, some sort of circulation ongoing there. There's a lot of lightning ongoing, and uh, it's, it's just impossible to see. As Nick was mentioning, and you can see the heavy rain that's going on with it too. It's, it's so tough. We lost, um, that. We we lost, lost that the camera. camera. Yep. So let's go, um, if we have any, any DOT cameras, Go for it, DOT camera. There we go. Okay, so you can see an intense thunderstorm ongoing. And this is the I-80, I-380 interchange. This is one of the spots I was just mentioning. That's where the circulation is going over right now. Tiffin and North Liberty are in the path of what could potentially be a destructive large tornado. It has had a history of producing a large tornado that has caused damage. This is the I-380, I-80 interchange. And there's not many people out there right now. That's because we could potentially be seeing a tornado come through. The image we just saw on our sky cam there briefly indicates that we, we could still have a tornado on the ground. So here's another look at I-380. 
Oh, I don't like that. This one. is around North Liberty. That is, there could possibly, I mean, this could be very close to where the circulation is right now. It looks like it's right it's around I-380 right now. Look at this. You can't see. This is why we're telling people to get off the roads and why people are pretty much at a standstill. Strong winds and heavy rain ongoing right now. How They're trying to show um, potentially a car in a ditch or something there. But the circulation with this storm is going right around the North Liberty area, crossing I-380. That's what, a uh, mile mark of 3.15? It's around the North Liberty area. Right around the Penn Street exit, south of the Penn Street exit. So there's something in the ditch there. Garrett, can you pop back the, okay, let's just even go to Max here. There's, I don't know what exactly is in the road there, but there's debris kind of close to that area, Highway 965, Coral Ridge Mall, that's showing up here. And then that's extending to the north. This is a sign of a destructive large tornado. Let's go back to the velocity. Uh, it's a little tough to see here, but I'm thinking right there. I'm so thinking a little bit further north? to the north. Okay. I saw, I see there's that debris showing up there, but somewhere in this area yeah. uh, on I-380, um, it looks like around I-380 to Highway 965, that uh, there, that is where the rotation would be with the storm. Somewhere around here. A potentially large and destructive tornado. Have we gotten anything else from the Weather Service? Sure I've got a uh, couple of reports of uh, some damage. Uh, there are There is damage to houses, grain bin in the middle of the road. This would be four miles west of Iowa City, James Ave Southwest, two miles north of Highway 1 there. Damage to houses. As, as well as a grain bin in the middle of the road. So now we have what, uh, homes road that have been that? damaged. That is um, James... James Ave Southwest. Avenue Southwest, north of Highway 1. And that's where we've had damage reported. That's closer to um, the west side of Iowa City, I would imagine. Highway 1. That's but, a um, It's possible that there's just debris getting tossed that way. We have, that's I mean, we have multiple circulation. tornado <laughs> warnings here that are ongoing right now. But this is the one that has been confirmed so far. And uh, I, I know that there are other people that are, that are across the area that are saying, hey, I have a tornado warning too. I get it. We are not trying to ignore you. Uh, we do right now have this warning north of Vinton. Uh, there's been some rotation there. That They've let that one go. Yep. We have these warnings that are around Waverly to Waterloo and there's not a ton of signs of circulation that's ongoing there. We do have additional severe thunderstorm warnings and we can pop on the reflectivity and you know gusty winds and hail all possible with these storms. We have though the things that are standing out are these pink boxes which are confirmed tornadoes right now. And we have this around the North Liberty area towards Solon and Lisbon. And we've had reports of damages now, damage now to homes. So it's possible that what you just said, damage around west of Iowa City, okay. So, so that would probably be that first tornado. Now we have a confirmed tornado to the east of Iowa City with this new warning. Any information here? They're just, they're saying observed. The one that uh, looks like there's a little point Major circulation. Major structural damage in hills. That is southeast Johnson County. So this is south of Iowa City. Now we have major damage in hills with another tornado. This is even separate from the one we were talking about to the northwest of Iowa City. This is another one. One house hit 
Damage, no injuries on Blackhawk near Frytown. So that's with our original one. We have in Coralville, sheet metal and insulation falling from the sky. And we have uh, this next tornado warning that is down to the, to the southeast of Iowa City. So this was the issue that we had been discussing, the potential for multiple tornadoes that are long lived mm -hmm. and the possibility that we could be dealing with I mean, we are dealing with it. We have multiple tornado warnings. Now we have multiple tornadoes that have been confirmed today. And now we have reports of damage. We have reports of injuries. We don't like to hear this. And unfortunately, um, it's continuing to happen now. And power outages now. Yeah, we've got about 1,300 folks in Keokuk County uh, without power. Washington County, about 1,400 folks that are without power. Uh, Johnson, obviously, just kind of went through here that has started to increase a little bit as well so uh, this yeah. is obviously doing quite a bit of damage just in terms of infrastructure in these areas right and now we're hearing we have uh, some people who are saying Iowa City power is out there and if you had plans to go down to Iowa City for watch parties or anything for the game tonight we gotta just wait we gotta hold on we gotta let these storms come through and then unfortunately we have to wait for assessments to be done on what's happening in these areas and potentially for power outages to continue. Um, so let's get into this next storm and the, the one that is down by the southern side now here. This includes Iowa City, or I don't know if they're including Iowa City. Iowa City is right in between. Yeah, I think you skirted just My past goodness. that. Those two areas Iowa City had a lucky day today, thankfully. But we have this area of rotation just to the southwest of here hills confirmed tornado major structural damage or some sort of structural damage has been done in hills this is moving to the north and east just near and west of west branch going across i-80 again stop driving on i-80 if you have anybody who's going on i-80 on it needs to be done we need to get off of the road we have seen what it looks like out there when these storms are coming through. It is difficult to see, and there's a potential that a tornado is on the ground. Oasis, just west of West Branch, around 508, Cedar Bluff, Mechanicsville, Clarence, between 515 and 530. We have a time lapse of uh, around the Coralville area. Yep. There you can see, um, I think that was from our sky cam. Yes. Or <laughs> so um, <laughs> that looks like a tornado that uh, either a funnel cloud or a tornado is on the ground, you can see the spin with that storm. So you can see the rotation that's ongoing. And um, there's a tornado that came just west of Coralville. So that is uh, the Coral Ridge Mall. So that is what we were watching pass around the North Liberty Tiffin area. And um, I'm trying to see if I can get a little bit better of a look. It's getting pretty muddy with some of the, the, the um, areas of rotation and circulation here. Um, Nick is, Nick, what are you seeing right now? Yeah, right now we're near the West Branch area and we can see that circulation, heavily wrapped in rain that is approaching I-80. This is what left the Hills area. I don't know how well you can make it out. We're seeing some pretty intense rain right now, but that is the area of circulation. You can kind of see that appendage and lowering right there that correlates with that area of circulation that is approaching uh, Interstate 80. Um, so again, if you're near West Branch, this is about to cross here. We've been seeing intermittent hail uh, falling as well uh, with this. I cannot tell if there's still a visible tornado on the ground with it or not but i can tell you um, that uh, the sirens are sounding here in west branch and there is certainly a very menacing sky and going back to earlier uh, we lost communication with you for a while because we lost verizon service while traveling through iowa city we saw a big power flash off to our east towards corville right where we were and where i was concerned about earlier we got east lost cell phone service but we're back now uh, in uh, the west branch area rebecca yeah, there's definitely a concerning look on the on radar too with this storm, and you can see it here uh, where Nick is looking toward the storm, 
and you can see those bright blues indicating that there is definitely some strong winds and what could be a lot of uh, circulation there ongoing. So there was already a confirmed tornado with this storm and the Weather Service said there was damage to hills just off to the south and west, just south of Iowa City, and this is heading to the north and east. It could be very close to or just west of West Branch going across I-80 and head toward Oasis. Have we gotten anything from the Weather Service? Not necessarily from Weather Service, but actually from uh, one of ours who, oh, I'm going to pull it up now. Um, see here, he was near, he said large trees down, down near Melrose Street off of exit 218. Um, that was coming. You can go to that picture in picture with Nick, because there's certainly a funnel cloud. Uh, yep. It's, it looks like it's high up. Nick, can you tell if that's hitting the ground, touching the ground at all, or that's lifted now? Uh, I cannot tell if it's hitting the ground, but I can tell you that it's certainly a funnel cloud passing just off to our south. Uh, this would be going right into the town of West Branch. West Branch, there's a funnel cloud right over your town right now as it passes the uh, Golden Arches. Uh, we're also getting really strong RFD in the back side of this tornado as well, but you can clearly see a very well-defined funnel cloud, uh, some spin up in the upper level of the atmosphere. Uh, I cannot tell if it's on the ground. I wouldn't be surprised, but... This is passing just off to our south right now. This is what's lurking in those heavy rain bands. We have radar. We are experienced. We know how to kind of get in the right spot, the right time kind of thing. Uh, but that's what we're watching right now. Big funnel cloud passing right over West Branch. It has quite a high base to it. It would be uh, tough to say if that is on the ground. But definitely, let's keep it picture in picture with Nick here. So um, McDonald's not a sponsor. We have, though, this right, to the, right around <laughs> West Branch where we do have that funnel cloud. And um, it's, it seems to be f maybe fading a little bit. There's certainly still some signs there, a lot of rotation. And this is right in between West Branch and Oasis is where we would have that area of concern for a tornado that already has done damage in hills. And as Nick mentioned, we are keeping a, a close eye on this. And he saw it there briefly. You can still see a kind of a rope tornado there or rope, at least a little kind of funnel cloud situation going on. It's possible that's still on the ground. It's very hard to say. There's some debris. Nick, you seeing the debris getting wafted there? Uh, it's really hard to tell. Honestly, you might have a better view than I have, quite honestly, because I'm kind of doing a few other things right now. It looks uh, we're like watching something it, just uh, flew out of there. Um, if you... Something okay, just flew out. Okay, it's a out. good possibility. Uh, we also have debris still falling from the tornado as well. But, yeah, obviously a, a pretty... A defined funnel cloud getting ready to cross I-80. This is just now east of West Branch. It uh, very likely could have been on the ground as it moved through West Branch. Yeah, so we have that area there around West Branch. We then have this other area of circulation around Solon, which we had been talking about this storm since it was back around Atumwa. And this one has confirmed tornado on it, still potentially going on. This is around the Solon area and Highway 1 and going to track to the north and east. So it's possible we still have rotation and a tornado ongoing here as well. And then right, Nick we watching down to uh, the south around the, um, around the West Branch area. So we do have, unfortunately, multiple areas of concern here. And we have talked about the environment today being supportive of long-lived tornadoes. And we are seeing that even if these have not been consistently on the ground, uh, we have now uh, these tornadoes that have been, these storms that have been producing tornadoes for hours. They've now extended this tornado warning. Garrett, can you zoom this out for me and show us Absolutely. where this is? They have extended this into portions of Cedar and Lynn counties. Um, and this is going even further out. This, no, this is a new one um, yep, for, this got published. for Jones County. And um, this is until... 545. Sorry, so Cedar and uh, Jones County included in this until 545. This is east of Cedar Rapids in terms of the tornado warning. We have a severe thunderstorm warning that's butting up to the west here. And uh, let's, let's zoom out all the way and um, we can show what's going on here. We have confirmed tornado that was in hills and we are still seeing a funnel cloud 
that meteorologist Stewart is on is potentially still a tornado that is moving around the West Branch area. We then have rotation around Solon, which has been with a confirmed tornado. That's been ongoing since it moved through parts of Keokuk County and just to the west of Iowa City, now continuing to the north and could potentially still be producing a tornado around Solon. Crossing a right now at West Branch. We have coming from Nick. Yeah, so we so we can go back to Nick too. Nick, are you seeing any indication there any further of that tornado on the ground? You know, honestly, I looked through my photos um, that I was taking at the time, and you can clearly see there was debris being picked up. Uh, as, a, as a pretty small but pretty tight little debris couplet, a uh, little pocket of debris, a little dust swirl spinning on the ground uh, just on the east side of West Branch. You saw the debris right around the same time, which makes me think it could have done at least some minor damage in the West Branch area. It didn't look particularly strong, thankfully, um, but it did cross I-80 just east of West Branch, and it does continue to move off to the east and northeast. Um, okay, so we have this tornado, West Branch. We are seeing debris coming down. Uh, the radar is showing that as well. It's mm. potentially still ongoing. Kaysen, tell us what you're hearing from the Weather Service. Yeah, we're just tracking in uh, some things in terms of what emergency managers are, are kind of relaying back. Um, Boston, Wade, Coralville, large incident right now. UIHC is activating their MCI plans and IC team live wires down um, across the area there as, as well. So we continue to see lots of issues starting to pop out of this now of damage that has occurred. There's also been some debris from one of our photojournalists sent me uh, along I-80 just to the east of Iowa City. There's debris alongside of uh, Interstate 80. So, so we are hearing of multiple uh, incidents now we have um, we have the Hills tornado wrapped in rain, which is the one that's uh, going through the West Branch area that Nick's talking about with debris. Now we have an incident in Coralville. If you had plans to go down to Johnson County today for the game, we understand it's probably not the best situation right now. And we're going to work to get you as much information as we possibly can. But we have multiple reports of damage of towns that have been hit and a serious situation that is going to make things difficult to travel down into Johnson County. And we still have tornadoes ongoing right now. And we have still, unfortunately, damage that's coming in. So around the Solon area, we have that area of circulation that is, that is happening right now. We have the... Almost two. Uh, we have another one, uh, yeah, just to the on the north side there of that storm and then around west branch that nick was watching so we have multiple areas of concern in terms of the in, in terms of uh, the possibility of tornadoes still ongoing the probably um strongest unfortunately area is around that west branch down to the south but um you can see to the north, there's some inflow showing up where that other area of circulation is. That's likely what was coming out of hills. And then possibly down here is what's going in between West Branch and Rochester. So we, we do have uh, several areas of concern here. And there still could potentially be a situation ongoing here on Highway 1 around uh, Solon, between Solon and Lisbon, getting close to Highway 30, where we could be seeing still a large tornado ongoing. That's been the one that has been, um, unfortunately, on the ground at least intermittently between Ottumwa through Solon now. Does look like that tornado uh, located over Cedar Bluff or near West Branch was confirmed on the ground and possibly west of Springdale as well. Um, the so wording here is plural uh, tornadoes, not singular. Uh, so that's most likely seeing three separate areas of circulation yes. uh, within these two warned uh, polygons right now. Yeah, so that's so nick was e even seeing this uh this rotation here as he was saying it was going east of west branch so that was that and then we have this on the north side that was going uh through hills and then we have this rotation still around the solon area lifting to the north toward highway 30. and let's uh i can hear the rain hitting the the walls here at broadcast park let's uh go back to the reflectivity and talk about the other storms that are ongoing here we have a large severe thunderstorm warning that is encompassing 
Um, much of our area here in the southwest, can we can we get into the particulars of it? Yeah, Garrett, sure. we can zoom in and maybe get an indication of what's going on. So we have, um, of course, the tornado warnings, and we then have this large severe thunderstorm warning, 70 mile per hour winds. Even though this is not tornado warned, 70 mile per hour winds are strong and can do damage. And this is a long line of storms. We had been talking about this potential too, that as the storms line up, then they're producing these very strong winds. <clears throat> Excuse me. We then have warnings up to the north. And uh, this is into Black Hawk County around Waterloo and then around New Hampton, 60 mile per hour winds and quarter size hail. So this is all going to continue to push to the east. And then our biggest areas of concern are down here. Still a tornado warning south of Washington on Highway 218. And, um, and then we have these other warnings to the north. So this one uh, may end up staying just out of our area to the southeast of um, Washington, or to the southeast of Washington County, yes. So around Mount Pleasant there. Mm -hmm. Going back to the north, they did drop the confirmed tag on this storm around Solon. Though this storm had been doing damage around Lisbon, I wouldn't let your guard down because still a tornado warning, but they have let go of the confirmed language with the northern one. This heading along Highway 1 toward Anamosa, and then we have... Looks like a fourth one just popped up. Um, just on so the now south side of Cedar County. Yeah, so now they've issued another warning. As we're seeing this line with multiple notches of rotation kind of lining up along it, and we have the confirmed two at least that have been confirmed here in Cedar County. Tipton, very close to Tipton, could possibly split the town of Tipton, but going to get close to Highway 38. And then we have this one that's going to head toward Highway 30. Okay, so out. multiple tornadoes on, ongoing and multiple tornado warnings. We then have Wilton encompassed this, in this in the southeastern portion of Cedar County. And yeah, let's go ahead and uh, and track those out. Sure, absolutely. Uh, starting off with the uh, farthest north one here, because I did pull that one up first. Uh, that one is at a, moving at about 55 miles per hour or so. So we'll kind of pan up to that one for the time being. Uh, going from that circulation, following it up towards the, I believe it's north northeast. That will continue to work its way off. Again, uh, moving at about uh, 55 miles per hour, so still moving pretty quickly. And uh, that does put it into the Mount Vernon area here within uh, probably the next. Uh, 90 seconds or so. So if you are in the Mount Vernon area, be sure you're taking shelter now. You probably should have already been uh, in your sheltered spaces by now. Anamosa, those of you should probably start considering working your way down to those areas right now as that system is going to continue to move its way up that way uh, here within the next about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, eventually moving beyond the uh, current warned polygon in that particular location. Um, though as we do continue to work our way further down with those two pockets of circulation right now, I do believe those are a little bit slower. Let me double check on that one. Uh, that current polygon should be expiring here in about nine minutes or so, uh, but that's still moving pretty quick at about 55 miles per hour as well. So doing two of those, uh, starting with the northern one, uh, as that does continue to work its way off towards the northeast, moving it closer towards Stanwood uh, here within the next about what is it, seven minutes or so, so making sure the warning does not extend yet, but that is certainly something we'll have to watch out for because that was the confirmed tornado we did have not too long ago. Same goes for the southern more, southernmost portions of uh, our area of rotation as well. That'll continue to work its way into Tipton here, uh, also probably within the next 90 seconds or so. So that is something you probably should already be headed towards your safe space. I know there's not a tornado warning going out right now. Still, there is that signature of uh, some rotation a little bit. Tipton. Yeah, the Cedar County, Mount Vernon, and down to the south. I mean, but around Tipton, you see that kind of zone there. Uh, then just right to the north and then to the north again around Mount Vernon. Uh, right around Lisbon, where that would have moved through um, emergency management out of, um, or getting close to now, actually. Emergency management in Lynn County saying 70 mile per hour winds. That's still very strong. And these storms are moving fast. So... You want to make sure that uh, you are still sheltering in place, regardless of if there's a tornado on the ground or not. Mount Vernon around Lisbon and then to the north and east here, uh, areas like Anamosa, Martell, Springville, Morley, Monticello. And then we have further down to the south around Tipton. Okay, we have a new tornado extended. warning. Now they're saying still confirmed. 
And that's the possibility we have two tornadoes ongoing in two different zones here. So we have um, these tornadoes that have been ongoing and these areas of circulation, and we have heard of damage, of live power lines down, of many people losing power. We now do have some video out of uh, the Hills area where we did have this confirmed tornado, and that's just not what you want to see. Uh, so this is from Nick Weig, and this is in Hills. This is south of Johnson, or Iowa City in Johnson County, and this is damage to homes now. And this is the reality of what could happen with these tornadoes, unfortunately. They've been intense, and they have been widespread. And this is the concern. This is why we have a tornado watch that is labeled a particularly dangerous situation. This is the first severe weather threat that has been widespread for this season. We had tornadoes in January. We had those isolated, isolated storms that happened in January, and we had two tornadoes that were confirmed out of that, one in Williamsburg. It was record setting. And then we had this situation after we've spent weeks and weeks in kind of a wintry spring mix. And now we are talking about a situation with a very powerful storm that has led us to this PDS tornado watch, a high risk issued. And this is a situation where it is incredibly rare for, but it is issued because of the potential for long lived intense tornadoes and the confidence for multiple violent tornadoes in the area. We have already seen this happen. If there's a tornado warning, you need to take it seriously. We are seeing damage. We are getting damage. We're getting reports of injuries. People's power is out. People have lost their homes. And we don't want there to be any more people hurt. We have to take each one of these seriously. Even if it's just a severe thunderstorm warning, we have seen things quickly evolve with these storms. And we have seen tornadoes develop rather fast. And we have multiple areas of concern with multiple tornado warnings in place. This one, okay. south side of uh, Cedar County, you can see the inflow notch, the winds quickly racing in. There's a zone of rotation there. That would be heading close to New Liberty, possibly just south of Bennett. And then we have the area around Tipton with rotation there. I mean, any of these spots, <laughs> there's, there's just all these spots with the rotation. Yeah, certainly concerning over Tipton right now. And we can hope that's not not reality that there's a tornado in Tipton, but it's possible uh, based on the, the signature there. Can we go to the reflectivity and see what that looks like? <clears throat> yes. The weather service is saying this confirmed. Not really a strong Pretty rain indicator there. Would be wrapped in rain. Can we go to the correlation coefficient? Mm -hmm. This is a radar product where we can tell the difference between if it's just precipitation falling or any debris. Okay. That is what's known as a debris ball. And that is a sign of a tornado ongoing that unfortunately went through the town of Tipton or very close to it. So debris is being picked up in the air right now and there is a tornado that is in progress northeast of Tipton heading toward Highway 30 near and east of Clarence. So around the Clarence area, uh, heading near the Tipton Walmart here toward Clarence between in the next 10 minutes. Massillon, Oxford Junction, Lost Nation, you're in the path of this storm within the next 25 minutes. I you need to be in your safe space. Ban that too, to actually just do. Well, the warning goes all the way out here into Jackson County. You know, both Wyoming. Those right we now. have, yeah, those two areas of circulation Stanwood, Hale, Lost Nation, Monmouth. These are the areas that could be impacted by a tornado. We are likely still seeing a tornado on the ground north of Tipton right now, heading toward Highway 30. That, that, de that debris signature that is, pretty clear. is pretty, pretty clear of telling what's going on. Yeah, it still is. So that's indicating there is a tornado that is picking up debris, could be pieces of homes or businesses, or could just be stuff from fields. And we can hope that it's uh, not homes, but the reality is that it's uh, gone close to a town and is heading to the east. Wald, Sandwood, Clarence, you need to be in your safe space. Massillon, I apologize if I'm messing up that name. Mechanicsville could potentially be a little bit of rotation uh, around to the northeast of there. We then have 
And this area to the north, they have, um, they don't have the confirmed tag on this one, correct? And that, yes, and that rotation signature looks significantly better. That there's not ever. much rotation, as much rotation ongoing as it was. So um, this could likely be falling debris. There could still be falling debris. There's been a lot of reports of that, unfortunately, uh, from the strong tornado there, but definitely some strong winds still. There was a report of Lisbon, 70 mile per hour winds. Kaysen, do we have anything new uh, that's come from any, uh, anyone from the weather service or emergency managers? Yeah, I've been trying to monitor a little bit here. I haven't seen a whole lot of other reports um, besides uh, just some 70 mile per hour wind reports right now and just some pea-sized hail across those some ones, locations. Uh, mainly to the north? There's uh, damage pictures from around Coralville Mall, power lines down, roof damage, scattered debris. Um, and we saw that image from our sky cam. Um, there's uh, another warning in Delaware County to the north. Um, yep. And I'm going to, if you want to talk about that one, uh, Kaysen needs some batteries in his microphone. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's kind of dive into this one a little bit. Uh, now that's a little bit newer. Fortunately here, this does look like a bit of a weaker signature um, as it does continue to move over the Manchester area. So that is at least promising for the time being. Is that sirens here now? Yeah, we have sirens here. However, that does look like there is a little bit of back end scattering on our debris tracker, which could indicate this could either be a hail or and or debris. So that is something worth noting, at least for the time being within that Manchester area. Um, as far as where that is headed off to moving eastward at around 35 miles per hour. So we'll go ahead and track it for the time being with that warning uh, as it does continue with that direction. Uh, so for those of you in the Manchester area, probably going to be here in the clear in the next uh, five-ish or so minutes as this does continue to track its way eastward. However, uh, closer towards Earlville, that should be moving in here pretty quickly. Uh, fortunately, I guess it's, it's slowing it down just a little bit, but that working its way closer towards the Dyersville, Holy Cross, uh, Piosada areas as well by about 6.30 or so. It does look like it's about an hour or so, but I do expect that would be a little bit faster than what that might be indicating just because it is attached to this overarching fast moving line of storms uh, that does continue to track its way off towards the east. Did you guys see any reports or anything from that new warning uh, in your Manchester? I haven't. Um, okay. They are just putting out a tornado warning there. And, Is that um, the lacrosse area in that spot? Um, I think that would be the, um, the Quad City still. Okay. But I do want to say the sirens are going off in Cedar Rapids I because of 70 mile per hour winds with the warning. Uh, we also have that tornado warning that's off to the east of Cedar Rapids. So the sirens in Cedar Rapids, primarily for um, strong winds that are coming into Lynn County. And we have the tornado warning off to the east. So um, 70 mile per hour winds, still not something to mess around with. And even though you're not under a tornado warning, we're still talking about some strong winds, at least radars showing around perhaps 60 mile per hour winds. And keep in mind um, this is at about 6,000 feet. That's still far away from, from the surface. So we're talking about an estimate from a radar site that's in the Quad Cities. And so it's picking up at an elevated level. So we're talking about some stronger winds down likely at the surface. And that's why the sirens are going off now. And we have that severe thunderstorm warning. And then we do have the tornado warnings that are off to the east. Um, so we have that new warning. Uh, the weather service just said radar indicated in terms of that one that's around Manchester. We then have the ones down to the south. Um, we've already seen damage out of these. Let's go toward Bennett down to the south. Uh, look at the radar signature, so the velocity signature on that. Yeah, I don't like that at all. No. That's, and that's hard to say, <laughs> at least in that's, that, uh, right about here. Yeah, that's a sign that there could be a tornado ongoing now. And south of Clarence. And then we have that south of Clarence that one's um, with debris. So we have these two spots where we likely have tornadoes ongoing. I'm going to show you an image that's from Kyoto. Oh, and this is where we had a tornado come through. We had talked about it. And, oh. This is just not what you want to see. Cars flipped and the trees just completely shredded. 
And unfortunately, we still have this situation going on. I hope this sets in reality, and it's, it's an awful thing to deal with, but we, we want to make sure that we're taking this seriously. The tweet there says there were no injuries, so we are thankful for that. You have to take these warnings seriously. We are seeing these rapidly develop and rapidly change, and we have told you multiple times these towns that are seeing these tornadoes. We've shown you the tornadoes live on the air. It is happening. That is why we have been highlighting this day for a week. And we have multiple areas we still could be experiencing tornadoes. So, so that's what I'm pointing out here. I just want to point out too, it's yeah. not the strongest signature here on the velocity product. Granted, within the past two scans, that has uh, picked up in its contrast a little bit more. Uh, but it has been more telling of this little wrapping hook uh, from the base reflectivity. So all that rain has been getting wrapped around this little nugget, despite the velocity is not the cleanest. I mean, granted, that beam is also having to shoot through a lot of heavy precipitation to get to that. Down to the south. Uh, which could muddy up the, the velocity, velocity picture. So, or yeah, the velocity itself, but that hooking shape there could also be indicating that uh, Anamosa area, you guys do need to be taking shelter right and now. And then toward Monticello. So they're, they're kind of shortening that one. They're shortening that, that warning a little bit. Um, but definitely something we should keep an eye on. We have the warning in Manchester, at least an indication of strong winds, if nothing else. If there's not a tornado, there's some very strong winds. We have the Anamosa cell, then down to the south, Garrett, we have uh, this tornado warning. Around clearance has probably been one of the more clear signatures, unfortunately, of the possibility of a tornado just to the east of clearance. This is when we were talking about crossing I-35, or I Highway 30, not I-35, Highway 30. And then we have um, some of these notches here, but just southeast of clearance, and then down to the south and the southern part of um, Cedar County here around Bennett, that is likely a tornado ongoing right now. That is right around the Bennett area. If you're in Bennett, you need to be in your shelter right now. This is going to then cross out of Cedar County, but there could potentially be a tornado ongoing. We've seen the from our product that is able to show us debris that there has been debris getting picked up. And this is close to the radar. This is likely a situation that's ongoing where uh, we do have the uh, debris going on that that's uh, not going to be anything that's falling from another storm. Uh, that's a, that was a pretty clear signature there in Bennett and Cedar County in the southeast, south of Tipton. But we have multiple zones and we have had multiple tornadoes that have been confirmed today and we have had damage in multiple spots as well. And um, I know that it is not um, the ideal situation when we have uh, obviously the game, the Iowa game that's going on today and people that want to travel uh, maybe to Iowa City. But there is a situation in Coralville right now that around the Coral Ridge Mall, there is a lot of damage that has been ongoing. There are power lines that are down and we do have uh, a lot of people that are likely going to be doing a lot of work around the Coralville area. So just something to keep in mind that if you had those plans tonight, you might want to think about changing them. Um, and we're going to work to get some more information about that, of course, as we go through the next couple of hours. But we do know there is uh, quite the situation in Coralville. Have we gotten any Storm anything? Storm report from Vinton Barnes down near Vinton after initial line went through a possible tornado that was at We had been talking about Vinton. We so talked about that signature in Vinton mm -hmm. in Benton County. Yeah, in, John in Johnson County right now, uh, when we talked earlier, there was just a, uh, almost like 50 people. There's now 6,000 folks who are without power there. I assume near that Coral Ridge Mall area where we still don't have our sky cam, it might be powers down or powers out in that location for right now. Um, but that camera is not working. That likely caught what maybe have been a tornado on it. So there's certainly some a lot of issues going on out there yeah. in terms of infrastructure that has been uh, completely demolished by this. I'd say there's probably. Okay, it looks I mean, like that Manchester one's been confirmed as well now. They're saying confirmed. Yep, okay. that was confirmed as of 532, so about a couple of minutes ago. Um, um, we're getting 70 mile per hour winds and in pea size hail and payload. Um, so expanding the Anamosa tornado. we have, yeah, that tornado warning, as uh, Garrett was pointing out there, um, tornado warning, let's see, in Manchester, they're not really saying much um, in terms of if there's a spotter on it or not, but 
a large and extremely dangerous tornado over Delaware uh, or Man near Manchester, moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. And then we have the extension of the other one that's kind of going to meet up with that. So we haven't had a lot of spotter reports, at least, of, um, but, oh, Manchester, buildings down on Burrington Road and South Fifth, power poles also down. So that may be why they ended up upgrading that. Um, looks like the Bennett one is now confirmed as well. That is going to start to move more towards the Quad Cities viewing areas that moves through. Uh, I believe that is now portions of Clinton County. And the Weather Service also pointing out the um, oh, yeah. debris that we were seeing down near Bennett. Yep, that's a lot clearer now within that last so they, here. So they are uh, continuing that warning to the east because of it. That'll be getting out of our area into Clinton and Scott counties. I know that people still watch us there. Still going to have to watch out for that Clarence area. I believe that was also confirmed not too long ago as well. Probably within the past five or so minutes, I think we saw that pop up for at least a so confirmation. We, we continue to get these reports of damage. Here's a, a look at damage from around the Coralville area. So this is cars flipped, obviously roofs off the, the building there. And we were just talking about that Coral Ridge Mall area um, and we could see it on our sky cam. So around Coralville, and we had talked about just west of Iowa City around Tiffin and North Liberty, those areas where we were concerned. Um, so there is a damage to some homes, trailer flip there around Coralville, large structural damage, and this is the reality of today, unfortunately. And we're not done. But damage has been happening, and it's continuing to be ongoing. We have seen damage from Johnson County that has been uh, going now these storms into portions of Cedar and Jones counties and still indication of tornadoes that are ongoing likely especially down in Benton uh, Bennett sorry in Cedar County and meteorologist Nick Stewart is out in the Solon area right now Nick uh, what are you seeing there yeah, I can tell you there's a lot of people walking around kind of assessing the state of things here in Solon. We did see power lines down right near the center of town. We do have power crews on scene. Also, firefighters have been walking around town. There's a lot of tree damage uh, through the town as well, a lot of branches down. So we're kind of still trying to get a feel for exactly what the town of Solon went through. Uh, we do uh, have other reports of some more damage in town. We're just trying to figure out exactly where that may be. Um, Right now, we're just turned off of Main Street onto South Iowa Street. You can see some flashing lights um, up ahead. So there's clearly uh, something happening here. You can see some crews working on removing some tree debris uh, up the road as well. So we're just kind of walking around town right now trying to figure out assess, uh, and assess what's happening at this hour. As soon as we kind of find a little bit more information, we will come let you know. Yeah, and no, we had talked about the... Um possibility of there still there being something around the Solon area on Highway 1 there and um, there's been some reports around Lisbon then to the north where there was 70 mile per hour winds so obviously damage and you can see kind of just some debris scattered around town there in Solon we have the reports of uh, damage around the Coralville area, and we talked about just around um, North Liberty and Tiffin. So it was right in between, just to the west of Iowa City, where that occurred. We now have um, additional tornado warnings going up in Cedar and Jones counties. This is confirmed. Um, this is, is this a new one that's coming out here. So Oxford Junction, just between Massillon and Oxford Junction, possibly there is where a rotation is. Um, it's, it's possible we're seeing multiple areas of rotation in these lines. Yeah, that's what I was, I was thinking there, perhaps. Kind of triangulating um, based on the report, too. So they, that's a new one until 630. Um, but golf ball size hail, also a possibility there. And um, we have this storm that um, is moving, what are they saying, 55 miles per hour. So we have strong winds and large hail that's possibility here. You can see Nick showing us the damage there. Well, Round Lost Nation, Oxford Junction, Monmouth, Crab, Crabtown, Otter Creek, Lamont. That's getting 
into portions of Jackson County there. Um, but Cedar Jones, Clinton, Jackson, jo and Jackson counties under this new tornado warning until um, 630. And they are saying observed uh, with this. Make sure I'm grabbing the extended one here. Yeah, yeah still 630. Yeah, okay, 630. So you can hear the wind here howling in Cedar Rapids and uh, thunderstorms coming through here. We do have we did have the sirens going off because of 70 mile per hour winds. I mean, very strong winds ongoing um, right now here in Cedar Rapids. Can we go to the closer look at um, Cedar Rapids right now? It, it yep. must be just on the back side of these of these storms. It is. Um, yeah, it's, it's the line we were talking we about have, earlier today. Um, we have then the second line that is coming in and we have a severe thunderstorm warning. I can hear the wind pounding against the door here. And um, there's still some strong winds. If we go to the velocity there too, uh, you sky. can see a sky cam just shaking there. And uh, winds 44 miles per hour. That's from the airport, I believe. Uh, the airport, our camera, uh, yeah, our camera's uh, pretty high up here. So you can see it shaking and the thunderstorm coming on through. Uh, and then if we go to the velocity, even around the Cedar Rapids area, we have some pretty strong uh, winds that are going on uh, with this line. It might be, a, there we go, you can see it right there. So we do have strong winds coming in that could be around 70 miles per hour. And the velocity is picking up 70, so it could be closer to perhaps 75 to 80 miles per hour. Um, meteorologist Nick Stewart is out in the Solon area where a tornado uh, potentially has gone through there. And you can see a large tree that is down. Uh, this is possibly some um, very strong winds or a tornado. And uh, Nick, I know you've said that you saw power lines down as well. Um, is there anything, any structural damage that you've seen in town? As far as we could tell, it seems like most of the buildings are okay. We did see a few shingles off of a few roofs and things like that. But the main thing that we're seeing in Solon is tree damage. We obviously have a large tree down, and you can see the people on the left side of that tree to kind of give some perspective of just how large it is. And we'll swing over. We're on South Dubuque Street at the intersection of 2nd Street, East 2nd Street. And you can see crews are also working on this other side of the road. It did not take long for you know, the city crews to do their job and start clearing the roads. There's another large tree that is blocking East 2nd Street, just west of Dubuque Street. So there's obviously a lot of tree uh, damage in town. Thankfully, it doesn't appear that we're seeing anything significant in terms of building damage, but uh, uh, we will keep you updated. Uh, otherwise, again, these storms are still not quite done. It's still rather windy. A lot of people walking around. If you are in a damage area, one thing to keep in mind of course, is down power lines. Be very mindful of power lines that may be down if you are assessing the damage. Better yet, just wait till the storms are over with and let utility crews kind of take control of the situation. Really good news there. And, and you know, we've been talking about, too, the fact that uh, we've had so much damage around the Coralville area. And uh, if people are thinking about going down that way for the, you know, Iowa game or anything like that, we need to... Uh, give time for uh, these crews to get things just cleaned up here. We have a lot of reports of um, power lines down in a lot of spots. Uh, it looks like hail coming down here in Cedar Rapids and strong winds. And um, we do have still these tornado warnings ongoing, of course, and there could be more damage. So we have uh, this situation with multiple tornado warnings multiple storms that have produced damage and tornadoes, and we are not yet done. The um, Weather Service is saying for Dubuque County, uh, 80 mile per hour winds for that storm that's heading just out of our area. And so, I'm sorry, Garrett, we gotta get to the east here. So you can see the bright kind of yellows and red showing up there. Uh, we have uh, the 70 mile per hour winds or so moving through the Sierra Rapids area and heading to the east. And we have these multiple tornado warnings ongoing. And then we have the issue of these other areas that have dealt with the damage. We have more photos out of the Coralville area. And uh, this is roof damage. And you can just see things tattered. And this was just to the west of Iowa City around the Coral Ridge Mall. And this is the Coralville High V area. Well, near it, near the Coralville High V, where damage has been done, we have the, we've had reports of tornadoes with this storm, 
And uh, this is just unfortunately one of the spots that we have seen damage from. So cars being flipped, the trees that are down, and homes that have been damaged, buildings that have been damaged, some significant damage around a heavily populated area around Coralville. And we still have tornado warnings that are happening right now. This is why we have this PDS tornado watch that has been out, particularly dangerous situation, long live tornadoes. The tornado that went through the Coralville area originated from around the Atumwa area and kept on going to the north and east, these long lived tornadoes. So we have around Wheatland, still some circulation uh, on the south side, perhaps there. We have then Lost Nation and Baldwin area. This could have some gusty winds. We have these tornado warnings here. And then around Monticello, Mm. That little beam there you're seeing is yeah. actually the uh, Amazon shipping depot Facility. that's just off towards uh, the northwest of the radome. Yeah, so, so that's that. a little muddy and hard to see. And then we have the other one that's confirmed, and there was some damage coming out of that um, one around Manchester. And so there's a possibility the Weather Service is saying that that's still confirmed. There was some damage around Manchester, um, so it's possible that, that there's still in a tornado ongoing there. There's a lot of just bright colors that is indicating the fact that even if there are not tornadoes happening, there are very strong winds around 70 to 80 mile per hour likely happening too that can do damage as well. That is why we said treat every warning today as it's happening and we have uh, these fast moving storms that have been developing very quickly. We have meteorologist Nick Stewart who's out in Solon and uh, Nick, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, what well, appears to be the roof was ripped off of this building here on the corner of uh, East Main as well as uh, Highway 1. Uh, the hardware store, also El Sol Mexican Cuisine, the roof appears to have been ripped off there. Firefighters were walking around the scene to kind of assess that situation. While we were checking out some of the other debris, we did get a report that potentially some houses uh, sustained damage on the west side of Solon as you're coming in um, off of Highway 382 Northeast. So we're going to check that out to make sure uh, the neighborhood is doing okay over there. Uh, but thankfully, for the most part, at least in the core of Solon, as far as we can tell, it's primarily just tree debris but, or tree damage. But we're going to check on this report of house damage uh, on the west side of town. Thank you, Nick. And uh, we've been seeing a lot of just, unfortunately, pictures coming out of some highly populated areas. We had talked about that kind of just between Iowa City, Tiffin area and Coralville, and you were just there too. Um, and we were talking about that area of circulation and seeing damage coming there. We have then um, power lines that are down other spots, and we still have tornadoes that are ongoing at this time. And these tornadoes have had a history of being large and of producing damage. And we have not seen any additional reports yet. We had that one that was in southern uh, Cedar County. It's getting a little muddied here in terms of um, the county lines, but it seems like that one had moved out. And uh, we have this additional storm going into Davenport, but that Bennett one that was definitely showing a signature for tornado debris uh, was has moved out now toward Wheatland. Then there's this one that's moved out of Jones County heading into uh, Maquoketa. And we still have this warning here. Uh, and we do also have then the warning to the North Monticello Cascade um, that has uh, just regular tornado on it does not have the confirmed signature on it, but we do have a lot of areas of rotation and potentially some strong winds. Have we gotten any additional reports with these latest warnings? Um, this one keeps moving over. I've, I've got a couple of kind of updates on terms of some, I guess some damage and whatnot that's kind of going on or still uh, just a real quick note from the Johnson County Emergency Management that they are really quickly trying to get public safety that is still responding um, for and is assessing some of that damage and just a word of note for anybody who might be around power lines right now just assume that they are live that there's still a charge to them um, very dangerous situation especially in those areas that have been hardest hit yeah they're saying um buildings down in coralville um they have the power lines that are down they're going to have to assess um springville 
has roof damage. Um, there's, um, let's see, 69 mile per hour winds um, in Cedar Rapids. We've had semis blown over. Um, we've had all, all these pictures that we've been seeing um, that of the of the damage and um, this is around the Coralville area once again so unfortunately a uh, highly populated area that has had damage uh, around Coralville around the Coral Ridge Mall that we had been pointing out uh, that was nearby we saw it on our sky cam the tornado going through um, Johnson County Emergency Management saying multiple tornadoes they have damage in hills uh, they have damage in Coralville of course they're having to assess and so this is what we were concerned about, a long day of multiple tornadoes um, coming through. And still we have rotation ongoing and we have um, the possibility of there still being tornadoes in the area. Now we do have um, currently these tornado warnings that are out. Um, there's not been a lot of um, reports recently from the Weather Service in terms of anything additional um, from these storms in terms of confirmation of a tornado happening right now. So that is good news, but... I'm gonna say something to note too is how rain ramp these guys are getting too. Yes, it's hard to know because they are likely dealing with, um, we're dealing with a lot of heavy rainfall. Um, we're also dealing with the um, fact of the it's it's been going on for a while now and these storms eventually will um lose that tornado potential and kind of turn into more of a wind threat as we have been seeing and that's why we still continue to have these severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for the winds of 70 to 80 miles per hour so um we do have the severe thunderstorm warnings that are just to the east of cedar rapids and um, this one is for, let's see, um, 70 mile per hour winds and could be some hail in there too. And even if you're not experiencing as, so much rain, we are dealing with the, um, we're also dealing with the strong winds on the backside of the system. We have these then multiple tornado warnings. We're still saying confirmed tornado around Manchester, which is pretty far away from a radar site. So we're going to have a concern with that. That goes out until 615. We have these warnings too um, that are out now, but these expire at, six, at 615. Uh, it would be dependent on if we have um, continued uh, circulation with these storms if they continue these uh, down up to the north and east but the rotation would probably be somewhere between Monticello and Cascade with this and we also then have um, the just uh, strong winds heavy rain on the north side I want to mention what's going on as a whole here with this storm we have this um, whole system that's coming through and it is going to be producing some uh, very strong winds on the back side. So we have a large area of low pressure that's coming through the entirety of the area. Um, let's see if I can get this satellite going. Oh no. So we have this, this uh, tornado watch that's posted right now that goes until 8 p.m. We do have the thunderstorms largely starting to push toward the Mississippi as we were anticipating through the um, through the day here, getting to the east of the Mississippi close to 7 p.m., which should still be on track. The issue then becomes what's happening behind this. And we are going to have some very strong winds that come in on the backside, which could cause some problems with cleanup. We have these wind advisories posted for the state that goes until 4 o'clock, or when does it go? I think it's 1 p.m. till tomorrow. 1 p.m. tomorrow. So this is not an updated map, so I apologize. Um, but we do have, let's see, I'm trying to get to some of the winds that's going on. So we have this large storm system that in Des Moines, where storms have already moved through, we're talking about 43 mile per hour winds, 51 in Pierce, South Dakota, 46 in Grand Island. And this is going to be reality for the rest of the night that we're going to have some strong winds and some much colder air that's going to be moving into place as well. And we have some, uh, we've had temperatures today that have been close to 70 degrees 
And now look at what's happening to the north and west. We have some very cold air that's going to be coming in. And for the cleanup efforts that are going to be going on, plus uh, dealing with the wind, it is going to be a bitter night tonight into tomorrow with these winds picking up and this colder air that's starting to arrive. So we do have right now these severe thunderstorm warnings as a result of this large contrast between the warm air and the cold air and this um, just volatile atmosphere that we've had today. And that's why we had the high risk issued for the area. We had the particularly dangerous situation uh, watch posted and it has come to reality, unfortunately, that we do have all these warnings, all of this damage that has happened that has come into place. And we have still uh, the situation ongoing with multiple tornado warnings. Now, we do have this confirmed one in Manchester. We haven't seen much information from the Weather Service recently. And then we have um, this large area of a severe thunderstorm warning, and that includes just the rest of eastern Iowa here. And um, we are going to continue to watch for 70 to 80 mile per hour winds and the possibility that we could still be seeing some areas of circulation. I wouldn't be surprised to let this warning go. It seems like a lot of that's moved to the east here. Uh, and then we'll, we'll have to watch this one into Dubuque County. We um, do have, let's zoom in on that one around um, Dubuque. Um, not a lot of, it, it's tough to say with that. Um, let's see if we can't switch to the cross radar, see if it gives us any better. Yeah, I'm not through. sure. No. It seems like they maybe need to let this warning go. Um, at, it goes until 615, but I don't see much indication there. They're still saying confirmed because there was damage around Manchester. Um, but I haven't seen. I guess there's a little bit on the back end of that. There's south of uh, 13 there. Okay. So it's possible it's kind of just another zone of circulation there around Highway uh, 20. Well, mm -hmm. Nope. That's hard to say too. It, it is. It's, it's getting a little tougher there. So we do still have these multiple warnings. And we're going to just be keeping an eye on, on that and see if uh, we get any more information. We, we had been talking about the inflow with this. It's been kind of wrapping around. But um, I don't think we've gotten any information out of this necessarily uh, no. recently. And that's pretty broad, especially with that little eye shape there. Yeah. It's, it's coming with known as occluded, essentially. You're having a lot of it wrapping itself, so it should choke itself yeah. out here pretty quick. So Being hopefully these continue to weaken in terms of the tornado sense. Uh, unfortunately, we still have a strong winds to deal with. Casey, what's going on? We do have a little bit of update. Obviously, uh, Clinton County is starting to get a little bit out of our area, but we did just have a confirmation uh, from law enforcement that a tornado is on the ground there in Clinton County, north, uh, uh, northbound on highway or, or near Highway 61, just to the west of DeWitt. So that is still producing. So that was the one that we were watching out of Bennett. Yes, yep. that one is producing a tornado. Uh, confirmed yep. by law and enforcement. Pretty clear. Yeah, there's a really strong signature there in terms of a tornado. Uh, I know some people maybe still de uh, are watching to get our signal, certainly. So we will mention it just south of Welton there, crossing Highway 61 uh, off to the north and east towards Charlotte, Petersville, Goose Lake. So um, that is certainly an area of concern there. And we have to keep a very close eye on um, these other storms because, I mean, still, even as they're, uh, you know, continuing to push into the east here, they're still producing these tornadoes. Uh, and there's, uh, yeah, Charlotte, Van Buren, Andover, Savannah within the next uh, basically 30 minutes, fast moving storms. And that uh, would be then getting to the east of the Mississippi. We do have these other ones still kind of hugging to the east here. And we have had uh, these storms that have produced large damage, damaging tornadoes. Yeah, and actually the, out of that too, as a lot of these tornadoes do start to wrap up, again, you got to keep in mind that a lot of these uh, storms have been lifting a lot of really heavy, dense air recently. All that has been lifted up. So as this all starts to s sink a little bit on the back end of this, that's where a lot of these uh, fast moving straight line winds are really gonna become a much more of a problem. I know we've been talking about it uh, throughout our day today too. A lot of the, once this line starts to form, that's when these really strong winds starts to uh, develop. And I know Rebecca's pointing this out too. There's that large line starting to form as it does continue to track its way out. Despite the fact that the actual area of low pressure is more towards northern portions of the state of Iowa, the initial line of the dry line itself pushing further out is continuing to at least 
move past the Mississippi River, but still kind of floating along that Highway 61 line from pretty much Dubuque all the way down to the Quad Cities area uh, with a handful of uh, those warnings still kind of hanging around. Um, fortunately, you can kind of see with that Manchester one, it's still hanging steadily with a, uh, with a Delaware County one, I should uh, say. Um, a lot of the heavier portions of that yellow that you're seeing there is on the kind of the midway point of that warning, meaning they might just allow that one to expire without looking at it, at least with any updates recently. Um, have you guys seen anything confirmed? Yeah, they haven't. Um, they haven't really been saying much, but they they are they're continuing. Um, they have so many tornado warnings. It's possible that some of these are not taking a super close look at, and they're not letting go right away. But um, oh yeah, see there was that uh, rotation. Looks like it just went north of that whole warning. Yeah. Into Coldsburg area. So Port Guttenberg. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that, certainly, and still some very strong winds, too, with these storms around 70 miles per hour or so. I do want to go to meteorologist Nick Stewart, who is live in Solon right now. And uh, Nick, unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of damage uh, in town. Yeah, we're on the far west side of town. When you come into town on the west side, we're in one of these new developments. It's Trail Ridge, which you can see is some of these new built homes here. The actual part of the roof was ripped off, exposing a lot of the interior of the building, a lot of the insulation ripped off as well. And what's so interesting is if you look down closer towards the side of the road, you can almost see the tornado crossed literally right here. The tree on the right is angled off to the left, and the tree on the far left is angled to the right. So you can actually see the spin and the way the damage kind of rolled right on through. Off to my right, we have some uh, tree damage and things like that over here, but Solon is actually behind me. So some of the damage that we saw in the town of Solon, that was likely actually what we call RFD, a rear flank downdraft. Just really strong winds wrapping on the back side of the tornado. That's most of the damage we saw in town. And again, if you kind of look off this way, you can kind of see some of the damage to the treetops over there. Just kind of cut off right near the top. We've been talking to several people in town. Thankfully, we're not aware of any injuries. And the good news here, too, is that everybody we talked to got the warning and took shelter. So thankfully, uh, one of them actually alluded to the fact that the days of notice ahead of time, the amount of warning that we've been giving people for the last week, really set the tone that they knew that they would probably take shelter today. So thankfully, no reports of injuries thus far in Solon. Unfortunately, though, we have seen many reports of damage in town. And Nick, um, as we have been talking about another issue with the system, too, is the fact that we now have the winds that are going to pick up to not even related to thunderstorms. So are you seeing a lot of, you know, tree limbs and branches hanging that people maybe need to think about, too? Yeah, when we were in Solon itself, you know, when we were driving around, we saw those big trees that were knocked over and things like that. Most of that was tree debris. Again, over here on the far west side is where we see more structural damage. So that's kind of where the, the tornado appears to have come quite literally right through this trail ridge uh, subdivision. But again, in town itself, it's mainly just tree damage. Um, we saw a lot of very large trees down, tree limbs down, power lines hanging in some of those limbs. Uh, you know, Thankfully, again, you can, I'm just to show the power of it, I'm actually kind of looking over a little bit closer at some of the damage here. Zim, if you look at the far right, you can actually see an air conditioner unit that clearly was just ripped from wherever it came from and just kind of deposited there. Um, it really just goes to show the force of this tornado. And of course, the garage doors on the, on the, the houses themselves also kind of bent into shape. I believe these houses, as you can kind of tell by the driveway, are still new construction. I don't think anybody was actually living here in this area. Um, but also, of course, you have the porter potty that's knocked over as well. Just kind of showing the intensity of the winds that were coming through town here. Yeah, that's um, obviously a sign, especially that air conditioning unit. And uh, I, the other concern, too, is just, you know, any of this debris that's sitting around, uh, we, we then have the issue of the winds picking up on the backside, too. And we are so thankful that there weren't any injuries and uh, that, you know, we're, we're still seeing damage coming out of the Coralville area. We've seen, we saw cars flipped over there. And you were in that area. We, we kind of saw it briefly on our Skycam, too. Um, this was a situation that we knew we could have multiple violent tornadoes today and unfortunately we're seeing it come uh, we've seen it come to fruition. 
not only just multiple tornadoes, but multiple storms that produced multiple tornadoes. You know, we were originally on this storm way out west towards uh, the, the Malcolm area where we got that tornado, that big stovepipe tornado. And now we had those big tornadoes in Keokuk County as well, those big wedge tornadoes. We clearly had tornadoes as they moved to uh, the Coralville and Solon area. There might be even more damage kind of in this subdivision. We'll check that out in a minute. Um, yeah, multiple reports of damage, multiple uh, tornadoes clearly have occurred from multiple different storms. And this was the area right where I'm standing right now that was in a level five of five risk, a high risk for severe weather. And that's certainly verified today. And the last time we even had one in Iowa was June of 2014. Um, and you remember the last time there was a PDS tornado watch, and uh, right. that was when we were in. Um, you can still hear we me. We were in Old Wine. Uh, we had a tornado there, and Nick was saying I think may have been having some problems with cell service. Um, but when we're talking about these these words, we're throwing out this big stuff out there, and we're saying you know high risk, and maybe all week you're getting uh, fatigue of us saying you know this this was going to be a day that uh, we had to pay serious attention to. Unfortunately. Um, we're, we're still seeing it happen, and uh, we've had these multiple tornadoes that have caused damage from, yes, multiple storms. It's not just one storm that's made uh, a couple of tornadoes happen. We still are seeing it happen. They're lined up here, getting close to the Mississippi River, um, but around DeWitt, there's been some damage of um, power lines getting caught in this tornado, and um, it was the house that was um, in DeWitt that was leveled. Yeah, it was completely um, leveled according to law enforcement. And so uh, this is still a situation going on in far eastern Iowa. And Garrett, if we can go further to the north um, and see if we have, we have that other tornado warning. We have these two. Um, that Manchester one, I do believe is, it, it sounds weird, but I do think that one kind of got forgotten a little bit because if you traced it back a bit, that circulation moved through it yeah. at about 540 and then hooked right through Colesburg and Guttenberg and across the Mississippi, leaving yeah, it went through pretty quick. I'm curious if they maybe, um, yeah, yeah it's that that came on through. There were, there was some damage, and then there maybe is still some circulation in the area, but um, that one is expired. That I just think expired. it's populating okay. on our max system. Right okay, now. so that that's going expired. to go away. We then have this one, 615, um, and this is in Dubuque County around Epworth and Piasta. Um, Looks more towards the Piasta area, headed towards the Piasta area. Yeah, so there's that area of circulation there, um, and that's a possibility. We also have had this warning for severe thunderstorms. Are they still saying 80 mile per hour winds? Yes. Um, so that's heading toward Dubuque and probably getting around there now. And then we still have um, that's this big the, line here. Yeah, the edge of this line coming through um, the entire area right now. Um, there's still more back toward um, Vinton. And um, we have more, more rain back there. No, maybe my radar is old. A little bit old. of a stratiform. Oh, well, my radar is like. old. See what the um, yeah, we do have, we have some, you know, just a little bit of rain back that way. And um, we, around Cedar Rapids, the heaviest, the strongest stuff has moved off to the east. So we're getting to that point toward the end of this now. Unfortunately, it's not done. Some people have lost their homes today. Some people have to clean up with their cars getting flipped over. Power outages are happening. Um, I, I, I don't know if Johnson County Emergency Management has said anything else, but we definitely need to stay away from the Coralville area because they are dealing with a lot of cleanup that is happening there. So um, Johnson County Sheriff's Office, let's see. Um, they haven't said anything, but Johnson County just saying, um, they're saying down power lines are still live as we mentioned earlier, and they want, uh, they're going to need people to stay away from areas like Tiffin, Coralville, Solon, as they are doing cleanup. And we will show you as much as we can, but Definitely something that is going to take some time there. Um, they just issued a new tornado warning for Dubuque County. Head up that way. There and so that's on the south side of um, the county there, south of Dubuque. Something to note here too is you notice how we had some really nice blue or greens and reds earlier and now here we are on the back end of this and now we're getting these really muddy 
<laughs> muddy reds and blues and all kinds of colors. And that's because I do think that these storms are now moving faster, um, yeah. that it's kind of causing these errors within our own radar estimated wind speed. So when you're trying to see these kinds of things, it gets really, really difficult just because of how now fast these storms are now moving. I do believe, uh, despite the wind gusts themselves uh, booking through at about, what we said, at 80, about 80 miles an hour or so. Um, yeah. I'm trying to see what the speeds of these guys moving by at. I mean, they're moving, they're still moving pretty fast. Um, we, we have, um, see um just yeah not anything that's uh confirmed but just at least they're saying uh tornado warning for around the um cottonville area and then they have and then we do have um still a tornado warning down to the south tornado warnings down to the south um we do have video from dewitt of the tornado there and uh, Mike, if you want to bring that one up, get um, warn alert. You can see that there's a large tornado, and this was posted about seven minutes ago. Um, you can see a lot of really um, intense circulation right there, and this is around Dewitt, where we do know there has been damage. And this is uh, continuing to push to the east thankfully, to the east of the Mississippi. Uh, and this is now turning more into a line. Unfortunately, still some um, still some strong, very strong winds are going to be going on with that. So there's a DeWitt on the kind of top side of your screen there, and that's pushing off to the east now, north and east. Um, let's go over around the Dubuque area, Dubuque County one. Um, and I think this one they're letting go. Um, I believe they're letting that one expire. So that will be let go. We do still have a little corner here of um, Dubuque County that's in this storm. And you can see the, the circulation there. Go actually to reflectivity, uh, Garrett. And you can see oh, yep, the yep. inflow uh, that's wrapping in. Yeah. Which is interesting too, that how it's still kind of prolonging itself, despite the fact that there's a large band of heavy showers just off towards the south, which usually should start to suck out a lot of that extra energy and moisture, but yes. it's still going. I mean, there's, it's fast and strong enough that it's still able to pull in air behind it and inwards. Um, yeah, so that that's definitely telling that there could still be some some circulation ongoing there. So that would be the only warning that includes a really little southeastern tip. Um, and it would likely not even really necessarily go into um, Dubuque County, but that does include a little sliver there in the southeastern um, Dubuque County. And then we are still continuing to get some more images out of Coralville and uh, we can take those pictures there so this is um, Coralville and you can see cars that have just been smashed and commercial buildings that have been ruined it looks like an apartment building that part of the roof has been taken off and um, we have this uh, siding damage you can even see that tree limb that went into um, the, the building there, into the siding. So we have um, this damage, unfortunately, coming out of Coralville. We had talked about that Coral Ridge area. And um, definitely, uh, you can see some of the cars, the windshield smashed, and either from debris or from hail. Um, but there are multiple locations where we have had damage today and that goes from Keokuk County into Johnson County into portions of um, potentially Cedar and Jones counties and Delaware County today uh, we have had debris that has literally been picked up and tossed into um, uh, far away from the from these storms indicating these strong uh, t tornadoes that were ongoing today so the good news is that that tornado threat is by and large over in eastern Iowa in terms of our coverage area in the far southeast into Maquoketa uh, and toward then the Mississippi River. That's where these tornadoes are still going. 
beautiful news, no injuries in Johnson County. And we had Impressive. multiple tornadoes in Johnson County. So that, that is a giant sigh of relief. The thing is that we have still cleanup to get through and we do wanna make sure that people are doing so safely. Um, and uh, one of those spots down in uh, Solon, meteorologist Nick Stewart, uh, you talk to the uh, Johnson County Sheriff, that is the best news that we could hear. Yes, I just talked to a deputy who was kind of making the rounds, kind of passing through town. Um, he said he has a lot of reports of damage, a lot of reports of sheds and barns damage. We had the house damage here on the far west side of Sullen, the roof damage in Sullen proper. But as far as he is aware, there have been no injuries attributed to the severe weather that we've uh, faced so far today. We are actually going to get a, a head back into Solon right now, we're going to do another check on some of the um, tree damage and things like that that are in town. But again, the best news that uh, I've heard so far is that there are no injuries here in Johnson County, uh, as far as the deputy is aware. Now, there are, of course, weather, there were other tornadoes in Keokuk, Washington County. Um, just keeping that in mind, that there could be other injuries elsewhere. But uh, thankfully, as far as we're aware, no injuries in Johnson County. That is great news because we're also talking about some towns that were hit and Coralville is a highly populated area. Uh, we do know of damage that was around um, Frytown to Solon, uh, Coralville, Coral, around the Coral Ridge Mall. And so that is some great news. Uh, we do know that it is not the, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that nothing happened today. We, we do know that people are dealing with um, severe damage to homes, apartments, cars, property damage. Um, so we do not want to discount that at all. But thankfully, um, we do have uh, that being the case that there are no injuries in Johnson County. We do still have warnings ongoing. We have some strong winds. We have heavy rain that's happening right now. Uh, we could still have some hail. We have these tornado warnings in the far east, one that is just clipping southern uh, Dubuque County. We do have power outages, though, and there are a lot of them that uh, we'll have to assess. This is in Delaware County, over 5,000 people um, without power there, and it's, what, 9,000 customers um, that are, um, yeah, so there's uh, about half of the county there without power, where typically, or over half, rather, they serve around 9,500 9, uh, customers, and uh, 5,000 800 uh, customers are without power in Delaware County, and we have been watching that storm there where there's a possible tornado. We do have around 5,000 uh, customers without power in Lynn County, and then down to Johnson County, that's uh, around 4,000 um, and 400. So hopefully power can get restored there quickly. Cedar County, um, they have around 3,000 customers without power, and uh, there's about just a uh, 7,900 people or customers at least there. Um, and then we can go down to um, Keokuk County where things really kind of kicked off. 2,000 without power and uh, they have 6,000 customers in town and then, or in the county rather, and then Washington County around 2,000 customers without power and they serve around uh, 12,000 people. So certainly going to be a lot of issues with the power having to be restored power poles um power lines that have been potentially um you know really taken down and and such i got uh, some video of that if we want to scan do uh this will be a goreville yeah. we got some very large uh power lines here uh you're gonna take it down oh we don't have internet okay um oh, we, we can we can take it here shortly can you can yeah, you here. send it Right there. Um, oh, there we go. Garrett has it in the scan do. Yes. Um, so, so I'll just show you some of the video. These are. So those are big, high profile, large power poles. And then you can see. And that's right off the Coralville strip. It looks like there's um, Comfort Suites and um, the Verizon and the Pizza Hut, of course. Um, but some some large uh, power lines down there. And uh, we do have, I'm just standing over here. I was just looking at the <laughs> monitor. <laughs> but um, there's, uh, that's okay. We got, we're just rolling with it. Um, we have uh, many locations that could be dealing with, you know, infrastructure that is down. And that may take some time to restore here. So um, certainly something to keep in mind. If uh, you were going down to Coralville to watch the game, 
and um, that is just going to be an area that's going to be very tough um, to navigate as they're dealing with those power lines down and we're dealing with them having to work to restore those things. So it is 621. We do still have these warnings in place and thankfully um, we do have um, a lot of this moving off to the east of, um, of the Mississippi. You're getting close to it. Uh, there's a lot of um, strong winds still with these storms and still some confirmed tornadoes ongoing. But we do have um, the tornado warnings largely getting out of our coverage area. We still have Maquoketa uh, around Davenport and then just like the little southern sliver of Dubuque County here that's still in this warning. And then uh, we have the severe thunderstorm warning to the east. Let's go to, um, let's just talk about what's happening tonight. Sure, yeah, as we continue uh, forward throughout the rest of our night tonight, um, I know we were kind of talking about it, at least uh, when I was here this morning, a little bit uh, throughout the noon show as well. Um, a lot of these, uh, the line of just th showers and thunderstorms pretty much depart in the area, for the most part on time, uh, as we do continue on. We expected a lot of these storms to really initiate right around two o'clock or so, just off towards our west a little bit, and that was the case. Here we are at about uh, just before sunset with the main line of storms just starting to depart the area. But uh, yeah, that big center of low pressure is going to continue to skirt its way out. And it's not pleasant, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, the, the issue here is that we turn to the problem of um, winter. Yeah, Again. still winter. And it's telling of the power of the storm. There's blizzard warnings uh, to the north. Yeah. And we have uh, some yeah. winter weather advisories hugging the northern parts of our area here because we now have, uh, after we get through the severe threat, the then cold air that's going to be coming in. Is, and uh, we have the blizzard warnings in orange. Uh, we have winter storm warnings in pink and winter weather advisories down to the south. And there's a large area of a wind advisory. And so because of this, um, this is you know not done with the storm system as a whole. We are going to still have to deal with very powerful wind gusts as we head through tonight and into tomorrow. That could hinder cleanup today, unfortunately. Uh, we do have wind gusts expected to be going around 40 to 50 miles per hour overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. And we then have the issue of, um, yeah, we could see some snow. Now, thankfully, really doesn't look like significant snowfall no. accumulation. Um, we do, though, have the potential of seeing some. And we do have much colder air. It's going to be coming into the picture. So we are going to have um, the very cold air coming, much colder air coming into place after, of course, the complete spring day today um, and then we're right <laughs> and then we're going to go right back uh, bounce back up into the 60s on Sunday um, meteorologist Nick Stewart is out in Solon who has been assessing damage there what's going on right now Nick yeah, so we talked about it earlier. We had that damage to that roof that was in downtown Solon right on Main and First Avenue. And you can actually see what's left of the roof here. It actually blew from this building right up here, which is the El uh, Sol Mexican Cuisine, and fell onto this other building right next door. And the scene is still very active. They're trying to assess exactly what's going on. Because if you can see up towards the roof, there's actually firefighters that are kind of assessing the situation as well. I'm um, just trying to really see if the damage to the building is uh, that severe where maybe they won't be able to return and something like that. So we're actually going to continue uh, down this road. You can kind of see there's a lot of people here in Solon that are kind of just checking out the damage. They probably have seen the severe weather reports. They obviously got those severe weather warnings. And again, you can see here on the front of the building, that's actually where we do have the fire department kind of staging right now. They're kind of assessing some of the damage. These two buildings right next to each other, uh, that's where appears some of the damage is. Uh, you can see the El Sol Mexican cuisine. And one other thing that we're looking at is a lot of these signs have been kind of blown down by the winds. You can see these big interstate signs marking actually bent right near the base here due to some of the strong winds that we're experiencing. It appears that most of the damage here in Solon was actually uh, wind damage. And thankfully, it appears the worst damage is east of the area. We do have a few other reports of some more major damage north of Solon. We're going to check that out here and get you an update here in a couple of minutes, Rebecca. 
Yeah, that was one of the spots where we had been hearing um, around Solon and Ely of 70 mile per hour winds. So it's possible um, that it could have been some straight line wind damage. And we, of course, had these multiple tornadoes. And we were mentioning, you know, if you're not if we're not in those tornado warnings, we're talking about the um, we're talking about the strong winds being the issue too. Um, we do have these storms that are continuing to push off to the east. Uh, this is video from Solon of a home camera showing the winds coming through. Hard to say, um, you know, if it's tornado or if it's winds, but certainly some very powerful winds uh, coming through and blowing things around. So, you know, it's it is tough to say. There's a lot of flashes going on. It's not necessarily the best angle, but it, it, it could be either one. Um, but the way that, you know, uh, what Nick is seeing, um, and you can kind of see the bend to the trees, that perhaps that is more of a straight line wind um, damage than, than a tornado. And so I'm sure the uh, Quad Cities uh, damage assessors. So over the next few days, we're going to be taking a closer look yes. at kind of determine what uh, move through those areas. Yeah, so the next steps here is one, of course, clean up and two, the weather service will go out and assess then the damage from these storms. And um, that's why photos do help as well as long as you can do them safely. And then we can uh, pass those along and they can start to do some of their initial assessments to determine what exactly has happened. Um, so We'll be just uh, totally upfront with you about this situation. We are going to finish our coverage around 630. We will be, we have multiple crews that are out in the field right now getting information. Nick is out in Solon. We're going to Coralville, of course, um, to get some more information about what has happened there. And we are going to continue to put out information on iwasnewsnow.com. We will then be back um, at 9 and 10 tonight. Garrett's going to go to sleep um, and we are going to continue to discuss what happened today and what you can expect then in the weather situation for the next several days. But this severe threat is winding down now in our area. So we can all take a breath. We knew that this was going to come through. We had been saying about 2 to 6 p.m. And that's exactly what's happened now. We have some storms kind of hugging in the far east. Uh, what we do know is that there has been a lot of damage around Coralville, around Solon. We know that there's been damage around Frytown in portions of Keokuk and some parts of Washington County in the western parts of Washington County, potentially around Cedar and Jones counties as well. If you have any information, if you have any photos that you want to share with us, you can do so on our website by going to iwasnewsnow.com. There is a link to chime in. And this is not uh, to put yourself in any danger and go into the power lines. We don't want you to do that. We want to give the crews plenty of space. But this helps in the assessment of these storms and helps us get the whole picture of what's going on. So every town here in Eastern Iowa can be covered. We're going to try our best to give you the full picture of what happened today. Uh, but you can help us too by sending those photos in and uh, giving us a picture of what's happening. We do have this uh, watch that's out until 8 p.m. They have already started to push it um, and start to cancel it in parts of um, the area. But this is this was a rare situation, mm -hmm. and uh, and we knew that unfortunately it was going to be a day where uh, we were going to have to deal with some some strong storms for a prolonged period of time. Yeah, this is obviously something that does not happen very often no. uh, in this area. Obviously with that high risk that was issued earlier this morning, uh, we knew what we were kind of in for and it was all about folks being able to uh, heed the warnings, have a way to get those warnings. Um, and it's great news out of Johnson County that there have been zero deaths. That means people did yeah. exactly what we wanted them to, found a safe spot um, and heeded those warnings. So and kudos to all you folks at home. Absolutely, and, and not even any injuries reported out of Johnson County. I think at one point we did get one injury um, I think from the Kyoto area, possibly from where those in initial tornadoes were, were coming through. But it's the first time in almost 10 years that a high risk has been issued. And the last time we had, uh, you know, a widespread severe threat that garnered a PDS sort of watch, that particularly dangerous situation watch, was the August 10th derecho. And those two, these two dates cannot be, you know, completely correlated, but it was, it's a type of situation where we knew it was going to be a, a very, dangerous yeah, a particularly <laughs> dangerous situation. And so we are, we are thankful that we're not hearing about uh, significant injuries uh, thus far. And we do know that there's structural damage and it is the worst kind of day for a meteorologist when you have the thing that you love, 
<laughs> causing damage like we're seeing across the area, especially in very populated areas and in a place that we live and we love. So hopefully damage can be cleaned up quickly and um, we do still have strong winds that are coming in on the back side of this system that will be coming through tonight into tomorrow morning. We do want to make sure we're giving people space, the crew's space to work, and you have to make sure that you are letting them, especially staying away from those power lines, super duper important, putting on sneakers and shoes when you have to get out if, you're, if you have an area that has been damaged. I know you want to check out what's going, going on or you maybe have friends and family there and their power's out, uh, but, but just please give them the space to do the cleanup and do the work. So we have, um, we have these strong winds that are starting to move in right now, uh, winds that are going around 30, 40 miles per hour. Um, we do have a very large low pressure system coming in, wind gusts 40, 50 miles per hour that are going to continue tonight into tomorrow. That could also hinder some cleanup. So we're going to, we're going to see these winds start to pick up though within the next probably two to three hours, unfortunately. As the sun goes down, it's going to be tough for the crews to continue that, but I'm sure they're going to try and restore power through the night as much as they can. We do have some more damage that's coming in out of Coralville um, that we've gotten some more images. And uh, this is just a lot of damage that's been happening, uh, debris scattered uh, around and some uh, just pieces of homes and businesses. Uh, we've seen a lot of cars that are flipped, telling of how just violent these storms have been. Um, and this was just one of many, unfortunately, across the area today. Let's go back to the, um, let's go back to the radar and we'll, we'll do one more thing here. We'll just talk about the, um, the storms are now pushing off to the east. We do not have any more tornado warnings. We do have severe thunderstorm warnings. They're pushing off to the east though, those storms. And I do believe that those warnings are going to be, uh, let go here soon. So we are going to wrap up our coverage here of the severe weather and we are going to continue to gather information about the damage that has happened and continue to give you, give you a recap. We'll be on I Was News Now at 9. I know there's something exciting happening this evening that maybe you're mm. not going to watch um, at 9 o'clock. We're going to have coverage, though, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on our website, iwasnewsnow.com. And if you want to join us at 10, we'll be back on CBS uh, with I Was News Now at 10. And uh, we are thankful that everyone was able to take shelter and we have not heard of significant injuries so far today. We will continue to give you updates as we have them, but the severe threat is now winding down here, thankfully, in eastern Iowa. Get weather worn alerts on all your devices. Stay ahead of the storm with Iowa's News Now Weather First.